it's summer. It's way too hot and I haven't watched anime in months. So today we're going to watch the first episode of every anime that's airing this season. Uh, maybe. You know, maybe I'll skip some. Like this? This? Whatever this is? Probably not going to watch that one. Probably going to skip that one. Don't know what it is, but pro probably going to skip that one. Now, as usual, these are generally boring. Once you get down to, like, here is where the, 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 the stuff that's interesting happens. Like, the weird fucking shows that only a few thousand people are watching. Um... I will do, I think I've made, I mean, I get, I've made videos like this before, and uh, I think how I did it before was like, okay, I'm going to take a look at this, oh, it's Slime Isekai Season 2 Part 2, that I like, and then I give like a review, like, oh, it's Studio 8-Bit, and it's adapted from a light novel, huh, and the, you know, stuff like that, like, maybe I'd go, oh, Kanojo to Kanojo, uh, well, that looks like a thing that might happen. Anyway, that doesn't matter. The point being... Um... I don't know if I really want to watch the first one. Because I would rather... Like, if I'm going to be watching Slime Isekai, I'm going to be watching it... Like, marathon. Because I've already wa I've watched the first part of the second season. So... If I watch... Okay, firstly... I've begun to lose interest, like, halfway through... The second season. Um, because, uh, the main character's just way too overpowered and is never under any threat, and so it, there are no stakes. Um, like, I thought, the first season was obviously like that, but I thought, like, oh, well, that's because they haven't met any powerful players in this world yet. But now they have met powerful players in this world, and Slime just defeats them completely without any fear every single time. Uh, I might still watch it. In fact, I probably will still watch it. But not right now. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm in a math on it, is the point. Uh, Maid Dragon Season 2. Uh, do you know what? Let's begin with Maid Dragon Season 2. Um, I'm not signed in. Let me sign in real quick, and then... I will go and watch Maid Dragon Season 2, the first episode, and report back with my findings. Toru was all like, oh, I can't go all out because I'll damage the city. I can't use my big attack. And then the, the other one was like, proper barrier to protect the city. But then her big attack was just a Godzilla laser beam attack. And like it, it didn't go anywhere except at the top. Like it doesn't, it, does, it doesn't make any sense. It didn't go anywhere near the city. They were like right up, flying in the sky, fighting each other. She's like, I can't use go all out or I'll damage the city. But her her big attack when she did go all out was just a beam attack, which only targeted the person she was fighting, Iruru, I believe was her name. So that was kind of I, that was a bit silly. Also, why is most of this episode a big fucking shonen battle fight scene? I thought this was supposed to be a slice of life anime. I'm sure they're just going all out for the first episode because they want to flex their animation skills. Especially because... I bet these are a lot of people who have been working on Fire Punch or whatever the fuck that the show's called, so... They probably had a lot of practice with action effects and stuff like that, so they, they just want to flex and... You know, put all your budget into it's a classic anime trick. Everyone's seen it. Put all your animation budget in the first two episodes, and then you'll have people hooked enough that you can, you know, that's what I'm. But on the other side, you know, then uh, who knows? It wouldn't be that surprising if the whole show was very well animated. Um, I don't know. So far, I I can't say I'm that impressed. I'm I'm never a big fan of like big dramatic climax in first episode like I like that to happen after I you know I haven't seen these characters in years like give me more than one scene to get reacquainted with them before you expect me to care again That that's just my personal t I don't know I don't know there were some cool moments. I'm complaining too much. I've watched the first episode of Maid Dragon S. Um, 
I don't remember if the first season was like that. I feel like the tone is very different from how I remember the first season. I remember the first season being way more like comedy, slice of life focused than that. And, and I'm not sure if I like it. I hope it's not like that for the whole time. Um, but I'll keep watching it probably. But sus. I wouldn't be surprised if I end up dropping this one. Um, Toru is not really my type. Kobayashi is cool. I like her. Um, Kana is obviously best girl. They've gone way too far with the memes. Like, the whole meme about Kana having thighs. If the, the new dragon girl that they've introduced is just, just proportionally ridiculous. Just like some of the most absurd anime proportions I've ever seen to the point where even I am getting getting concerned. Like, what's going on there? I feel like there's no, like, you can't expect me to take that as a character. You can't, you can't have, like, I don't know, that's, it's just a bit ridiculous, the size of the, her tits. It's just a bit, kind of, <laughs> fucking stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway. Um... Yeah, maybe, I mean, I suppose I'll keep watching it only because it's Kiwani and they generally do good things and I like season one. Okay, next up is Tante wa mo shindeiru. Oh, the detective is already dead. No way, is this the adaptation? No, 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 okay, it's not, but it's ripping off, it's ripping off that one, or I don't know, it's sus. Well, the reason I say it's sus is because... This is the manga. Okay, maybe it's not sus, but it just, okay, not sus, it just reminded me of something. It's not ripping something off, it's just reminding me of something. That's, that's the word I meant to use. So there's a, there's a, there's a Nisioi scene light novel, which I forget the name of because it's really long, um, which was adapted into a live action TV show, uh, which is about a detective girl with white hair that looks kind of similar to this, like short white hair. So I was like, hmm, detective girl with short white hair, interesting. But uh, this looks like it could be kind of interesting. I, I am a big fan of detective stories when they're done well. Uh, and I'm yet to see an anime that actually does detective stories well. So uh, let's give it a shot. Detect uh, Tente wa mo shindeiru. Omae wa mo shindeiru. Tante. Uh, crisis magnitude. Yeah, okay, sure, let's let's check this out. Let's let's see. I have I have no idea what to expect. I just wanna I wanna make sure this is clear. I don't interact with the wider anime community in any way at all, so I have no idea what people are saying about any of these shows. This is entirely my own opinions. Alright, uh, this is pretty fucking awful. Um Okay, let's go through all the bits about this that are awful. Okay, so it's studio like Gen Genji or something like that. Let me let me check. Engi. Studio Engi. Uh, the only other thing they've done that I, I know about or that I've seen is uh, Uzumaki-chan, I think it was called, or Uzaki-chan, what the f- uh, My memory fails me. This one, uh, Uzaki-chan, wa asobitai. Uh, um, the one that for some reason, I don't know, I'm, I'm not even gonna even talk about it. I'm not even gonna give it the benefit of being discussed, but uh, so I, I watched the first episode of that, I didn't even finish it because it, it was just fucking awful and uh, um, it looks terrible, like the, they, they don't know what they're doing. There must be like five people in this fucking studio because the animations always look like shit, but even more than that, the character designs look like shit. Like they look so dead and lifeless, I don't, I don't com especially coming straight from like Kyawani, who are like the masters of character animation, to this. The way they, their faces and bodies move is so, like, weird and non-human. It doesn't feel biological. It's, like, awkward and dead and flat and like a, like a marionette or something. It doesn't feel like anything. I, do, I can't, I don't believe that these characters feel anything. Like, I, I think she's supposed to be, like, a deadpan type character, but she... Like, maybe she, they just didn't bother to animate her facial expressions because this guy's not supposed to be a deadpan-type character and he also barely emotes. 
like none of the characters really emote very much at all so they just don't feel alive and their eyes look dead like I can't it's just one of those things that you can't explain like why the eyes look dead but they just look dead and like I, I don't like the art style but that's all just like I could put up with that you know there's lots of shows that look bad but are good but I can't put up with is how so this is the first mystery in the anime you know go back to Sherlock Holmes right they even reference Sherlock Holmes because it, it's oh of course we reference Sherlock Holmes pretend to be smart but no one's ever read Sherlock Holmes right you know it's not like one of the most popular fucking franchises in the popular canon of all time uh, the first Sherlock Holmes story studying Scarlet is like one of the, like it's a really good mystery you know, you, you don't start off with some bullshit. Like, Study in Scarlet doesn't start off with the Sherlock just, like, being like, oh, yeah, I already solved the case before you got here, which is what this does. You get introduced to the fucking deductive reasoning. This is... So what happens, how she solves the case, is that she just already knew everything off screen before the, before the show started. That's how she solves the case. She's like, yeah, I got... Well... He's like, how did you know all of that? How did you deduce all of that? And she's like, uh, I, I just already knew before I got on the plane because a good detective always always makes sure that she knows what's going on before an incident occurs. And it's like, okay, but this is a detective show. Like, I want to see that. That's the interesting part of the story. That bit that of deducing what's going on is the interesting bit. Don't show the aftermath. Like, I don't give... That's the boring bit. I want to see what happens in the... I want to see the narrative. I want to see the things happening. Not just fucking bullshit nothingness. Stupid. Uh, very annoying. And then the final fucking nail in the coffin is like, okay, obviously this is going to be some sort of, like, slightly heightened world where detectives are superpowered. Like, that's a pretty standard thing for a detective story. But no, it's like, no, nah, this is just Parasite now. This this anime, the, 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 the detective anime, yeah, it's just it's just Parasite now. Look, look, look at him. Stereotypical blonde gangster member. Yeah, he's it's Parasite now. Like, come on. Did you need this? Did you need this in your detective show? No, you didn't need this in your detective show. You didn't need this. You could have just written a mystery. I don't. I don't want to know what the fuck's gonna. I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll watch what the fuck happens next, but I'm not looking forward to it. I'm gonna give this show like maybe five or ten more minutes to possibly redeem itself. But if this, if this, whatever happens here turns into a stupid fight with terrible animation because this studio doesn't know how to fucking draw. Uh, then then I'm I'm dropping this and giving it a two. Right now I would give it a two, if you were to ask me. Okay, okay, yeah, no. We're dropping this. I, I lit I gave it two more seconds. And what's happening right now is the bad guy is standing there, completely still, giving the her time to explain like the history of the evil organization to the main character. He's literally just standing there not doing anything. While she it's so the other weird thing about this show is that there's no music. Like, it's so bare bones. The sound, like, the, it, there's almost no sound. I, it's mixed weird. Everything about it is weird and terrible. I don't know why this is so popular. This, it's, I guess it's not that popular, but we're giving this a two. Horrible. And marking one episode is watched. Okay. Well, that's, that's what you want from this show, right? Like... This is this is why we do this. We do this so that we can we can weed out the nonsense bullshit. All right, that is the first row down. Even though I only watched two. All right, Canajo more Canajo. It's Tezuka Productions, which is interesting. But uh, let's let's see let's see what this is about. Uh, yeah, don't don't watch Detective One More Shinderu or whatever. Don't watch that shit. Terrible. After harboring an unrequited love for years, Na Naya. Mukai finally gets to date his childhood friend Saki Saki. However, just as he tries to... Oh, no, it's... A, okay. You know, I'm down for a harem show. Is this based on a visual novel? Because if so, I... Oh, it's based on a light novel series. Or a manga series, even. Okay. In my experience, harem shows don't work in... In... Uh... Like, I, I don't like harem-type shit unless it's an, a visual novel, because visual novels are, like, built for that 
type type of story where you can actually explore each character's route. Like when you try and do them all, up, I don't know. I don't. I don't personally. I don't think it works. Um. I think the point of this is that that he's so he's he's just gonna cheat on his girlfriend or like enter a poly romantic relationship hey okay that's an interesting twist yeah let's see what that let's see what this is about you know i have i have i have interest i'm interested let's see i'm curious curious well, i really was not expecting to like this show but uh actually just relieved that finally for fucking three up anime in or whatever something's actually made me laugh uh surprisingly entertaining and a surprisingly genuine anime about entering into your first polyamorous relationship like it, it's a bit like it's very anime and then like it has a lot of dramatic tone shifts and stuff like if you don't like that but it is not a harem show i thought it was i mean depending on how you define harem it's more of a just a like a poly amorous relationship like i don't know kind of interesting kind of an interesting idea for a show and it's like a you know i'm normally i don't like like love triangle rom-coms very much particularly misunderstanding based rom-coms they're like the worst thing in my life but this is like a not really that like this girl is not jealous at all she's basically perfectly okay with everything going on it's just this girl that's like not quite sure how to handle it but kind of you know yeah it's interesting haven't been introduced to these two characters yet but based on the first episode gonna keep watching i don't know if i'll finish it i don't know if it's high quality enough for me to finish it but based on that i would give the first episode a six out of ten so which would make it probably the best and most enjoyable out of the ones I've watched so far. Which is completely not what I was expecting at all. Definitely did not expect that. But, uh, anyway, that was interesting. Uh, wait, I, I believe that was the whole first episode. Yeah, it was. Sorry, I must have accidentally skipped backwards to the OP while I was switching tabs. I, for a second I was like, hold on, is that not the ED? There's no way, that was just four minutes. But no, I did watch the whole episode. All right, now for a show I have no hope in. Uh, this is Vanitas no Carte, Carte, the case study of Vanitas. It's about vampires. Now this will be, this will be interesting. <laughs> there once lived a vampire named as known blah 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 blah, blah, blah fucking Chuni 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 nothing Chuni nothing. Nineteenth century Paris to find a book. And something bloody blah bbd boo bbd okay it's a tuny show and that's all i know about it let's watch it vanitas no carte the case study of vanitas um yeah you know i'm down for some tuny shit from now on, from now from time to time i'm down for tuny shit i can i can tuny i have the capacity to tuny if need be so you know i'm not gonna completely write this off uh, yeah, this kind of sucks. Yeah, this is kind of sucky. Bad. It's kind of not very good. It's kind of a little bit bad. A little bit, little bit terrible. So I already had a mal tab open of that. Yeah, kind of bad. Kind of, kind of drop in that after one episode. Not as bad as that other thing, but it's very bad. I will give it a three. You know? Yeah, I'll give it. I, I, you know, it's bad. It's a four. It's a four. It's if if you just wanted like, I could see a mood where I would be into this. I could definitely see a mood where I would be into this, but it would be like a have to be a very very specific mood. If I was to give a review, it's it's cute boys fight over innocent girl so far. I'm sure the plot evolves into more depth, but the. You know, I can get down with some, some steampunk stuff from time to time, but it's not particularly original steampunk. Um, I don't know, I just feel like it's nothing special in, in any way. 
um, and I will gain nothing from my continued watching of it, so we shall cease. Next up is Bokutachi no Remake. This seems somewhat interesting. The game developer, company going bankrupt, losing his job, returns to hometown, finds himself regretting life decisions, wakes up and he's travelled ten years back in time before he entered college. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Wasn't this already a show? Wasn't it called Rewrite? And this isn't related to Rewrite at all. Wait, but this was already a show. This is already a show. It's called Zac Efron 17 again. It was already a show. Come on. Isn't it called that? This was already a show. It was already a movie called Zac Efron 17 again. Or whatever the fuck that movie's called. Alright, well... This is this is this is all going to depend on the quality of of girls, right? And I'm sus. I'm sus of this show. I'm okay. You know, I'll just be candid with you. It has a seven point nine, which is which is interesting. But if I'm being honest with you, I do not have high hopes. I do not have high hopes for this show. So we'll watch as much of the first episode as I bear. Hey. Hopefully I will be pleasantly surprised. I tell you, <laughs> I was pleasantly surprised. Front wing? Was this a visual? Wait, is this a visual novel adaptation? Boku Tachi no Remake. I thought it was a manga. It says it's a manga. Why is front wing involved? Hold on a minute. Research is needed. Okay, no idea why Front Wing is involved. It's not. It was originally a light novel. But, uh, actually really good. A 18 minutes in to the first episode, which is 50 minutes long for some reason. This is the best show so far of the season that I've seen, at least. Just from the first 18 minutes. You know, maybe it will go to dog shit for the rest of this episode. Who knows? But, so far, really good. If I had to explain in a word my feelings on this, not or in a sentence, in a phrase, it feels like they actually put effort into it. Like I can feel that people who are working on this cared about the product they were making, which is an incredibly rare feeling with a modern anime. A very, very sadly rare feeling with modern anime that this isn't just a by the numbers thing that like the creators actually cared, like the writers cared about the characters they were writing and stuff, the animators cared and even the song is actually well mixed. First well mixed, well produced song opening of the anime season that I've come across so far. Um, so far I can recommend this. I, I, I might change my mind by the end of this episode, but so far I can recommend this. Uh, I like that they um, sort of... Okay, what I like about it is that they fleshed out the character for 18 minutes before the plot happens. Like in any other anime, it would be two seconds of introduction. Like, my game studio failed and I lost my job. Oh no, if only I could be reincarnated back as my 18-year-old self so I could make better decisions in life. And then a fairy would come along and be like, your wish is granted, hee hee, de he. isn't this funny, I'm gonna be a recurring character for the rest of the series, and then it would be like, okay, now plot happens, but no, they took the time to actually introduce you to this character, to show you, to endear, like, endear him to you, like, you see, like, oh, he's actually a really hard-working guy, and he's reliable, and he has skills that he could work on and improve, and like I want him to succeed now because I've seen that he was just screwed over by life through no fault of his own because he made what seemed at the time to be a sensible decision uh, and you know he has no way of knowing the other what you know like I'm endeared to this character I want to see him succeed and yes good good anime so far very excited to continue watching this one okay I completely 180'd you see, you see this is why always go into things with high hopes but low expectations because I had the very low expectations for this show and it has blown those expectations out of the water it deserves this 7.9 rating if I were to give it a rating based on that first episode I'd say an 8 would be appropriate uh, definitely gonna finish this show pro pro okay definitely gonna continue watching um, 
great. Highly recommend. It's a. Uh, it nails pretty much everything. Uh, I would have said like, you know, the animation's not the best, but the thing is, uh, it's obviously the animation is nowhere near gonna compete with Kill Annie, but, like, the the I care way more about the story of this than I do about. Oh look, the random dragon girl with ginormous tits has shown up out of the sky and they're doing an inconsequential fight where it's the first fucking episode so there are no stakes, there is no moment where you think, oh no, Toru is going to get fucking murdered in the first episode of Dragon Maid. Like no, it's pure spectacle flex of like, look how well we can animate a fight scene and you know, it's basically inconsequential, whatever. There's no character building moment there really. Whatever. I'm, I I don't want to complain too much about Dragon Man because it was good. But not as good as this. Because without anything flashy, with very grounded, you know, cinematography and designs and all of this sort of stuff, it through pure characterization and just a great understanding of the basic uh, fundamentals of storytelling and pacing. Pacing is good. You know, there are stakes in this show that I care about, even though the scale is small. Like, the scale is a university student. You know, will he, will he pass or will he fail? I care more about that than I cared about the fight scene in uh, Maid Dragon, where it's like, the whole city could be destroyed. You know, because I cared, it was better done. Uh, I know the point of Maid Dragon is different from the point of this. They're different shows. Okay. Main character, relatable, but not like too um, sort of Yuji every lead type blank slate, right? Like he has a personality. Uh, girls, cute, cute girls, nailed, nailed it. Uh, uh, interesting subject matter that is somewhat unique. You know, things like this have been tackled, but still, university-based animes are like fairly rare and this is looking to be one of the better ones i'm very excited to see where this show goes i'll just leave it at that i won't get too excited because you know maybe they'll fucking throw but there's also i was gonna say like the only problem with the show is the flat direction but then towards the end of the episode you get some really like pretty fairly well composed well done uh shots that look really nice you know you can sort of see a bit of it in the, the pv um yeah, this is the one I'm most excited for. In fact, I might watch the remaining three episodes that are out. Uh, I'm, I think I might just do that now, because I really enjoyed that first episode. I'm very excited. So I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and watch the, the next two episodes in this show. Uh, and then after that, what, are, what am I going to be watching? Oh, no. What am I going to be fucking watching? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to have to go from this to this. Genji Tsushugi Yusha no Okoku Saikanki Sai Kenkai is Kenki. Wow, I really fucked that up. What the fuck is this? How realist hero built the kingdom. Kazama Soma. Trans oh it's an Isekai. Of course it's an Isekai, I should have noticed that. Uh oh, this could be interesting. This could be fairly interesting as well. Alright, you know what? I'm down for some some economics-based isekai. Uh, this I will not be watching because I didn't finish the first season. Uh, I don't know, we're getting into some of the interesting stuff. Oh, there's a, there's a madhouse. It looks artsy. It looks artsy. Maybe this is a good season after all. Oh my god, there's so much fucking anime. There's so much anime. Why, why is there so much a Stop making so much anime, Japan. Stop. Maybe I can't afford to be watching three episodes of this. Ah, fuck it. I, I, I don't care. I don't care. Alright, I'm going to watch the next two episodes of this, and then I'm going to watch whatever the next thing is. I'm going to take it a little bit back a notch. <laughs> the second episode goes a little too far with the over -dr melodramatic uh, nonsense that is going to be ultimately inconsequential. Let's take it back a notch. Let's go back to like a... Let's, let's take it back a notch a little bit. Maybe not, maybe not anime of the year just yet. Let's take it back a couple notches real quick. This is, this is something very, very funny. This is something hilarious. So the big, um, 
uh, how would I even explain it? The big tension, the big problem that the characters have to solve in this episode is that they're supposed to be filming a short film for their project and, oh no, the guy accidentally rented out uh, uh, st like a DSLR camera instead of a filming camera, like a cinema camera, and so, oh no, how are they going to solve this problem? Except, look... <laughs> It's the same camera. It's the same camera I have in real life. And look what's right here. This is a filming button. <laughs> this camera that they used, like all of these DSLR cameras, even back in 2007 or whatever this is set, would have had a filming button. They've removed it from this camera. Like it would be right here. They've taken it away. It's the same Canon DSLR that I have. I mean, it's a very slightly different model. This one has an LCD screen there and my one doesn't. But it's basically the same camera, and uh, yeah, it would have had a filming button right here. Uh, I know this for various reasons, but I just found that very amusing, that I happen to have almost the exact camera, and I know that it has a, a button to shoot video, and uh, they... But for plot purposes, they have to ignore that fact. I don't know, I thought that was funny. No, thank you, you have a proper fucking DSLR, and you film all your videos on a phone? What's that about? Well, it's... it's very simply because the file sizes are too big to deal with on my 250 gigabyte Mac which is already full of like mostly my main priority being music stuff and uncompressed audio files take up a lot of space after a while so I do not have very much space to edit videos on my laptop which is why I almost never film with my DSLR if that's what you were wondering about. That other show I'd say it passed the three episode test and I'm definitely gonna finish or I'm gonna keep watching it even though Sometimes it goes overboard on the melodrama. I think as a whole it's still very good. Um, I was a bit too excited about the first episode. Um, only Mainly because I went in with expecting it to be terrible and it turned out to be pretty gr uh, good. But um, maybe I got a little... I over-adjusted. But I'm definitely still going to keep watching it because it, uh, it was very interesting. And so far I recommend it. Next up, I now have to watch um, How a Realist Hero built, Rebuilt This Kingdom, which is an isekai, uh, and that basically, it's an isekai about a realist guy who rebuilds a fallen kingdom, fallen kingdom by Captain Sparkles. It's about fallen kingdom by Captain Sparkles, uh, I think is what this anime is about, so, uh. Yeah, let's see if this is worth watching. God, why do I do this? No one even... These are, like, some of my least few... I've, I've made these before, and no one likes them. Because they're, like... I suppose the point is that I'm watching all the seasonal stuff to tell you if there's anything worth watching. Most people decide if there's anything worth watching by being on A or on Reddit or something. Or just in Discord servers with other anime fans. But someone out there has to be the guy that watches the first episode of everything. So that... You know, you know what I mean? It's a fun activity to do from time to time. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Watched three episodes of uh, How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. I kind of expected to like this one, mainly because I'm a sucker for uh, the isekai trope, where, um... So there are really two genres of isekai. There's sort of online style isekai and no game no lifestyle isekai so basically either the isekai protagonist is uh, just so strong and, and like powerful OP that everything is trivial and easy for them uh, or they have knowledge from their previous life that, that now has new applications in the isekai world which lets them uh, thrive uh, and rebuild a kingdom like a strategy game. So, you know, Ascendance of Bookworms and like that. Uh, I much, much, much prefer the second genre of isekai. Uh, and this is the second genre of isekai, uh, which I could tell from the title. Uh, I much prefer that. I like it when mundane abilities, which are not so... Uh, you know, suddenly have are given a, an important purpose in an isekai. I like that. I like that trope, and I'll watch pretty much anything with it. In fact, I've watched every show that has. I think I've watched all of those types of shows. Anyway, I'll definitely be finishing this. One. If 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 it had been if this had been done airing, I would have just I would have probably just sat there and watched the whole show just then. 
Uh, so this is definitely going on my watching watching list because this is this is cool. I am now I'm annoyed because I don't get to know what happens next. Okay, so next is this one, which we're not watching because I didn't watch the first season. Uh, next is... Okay, now this this sort of area, this is where you start to get to the stuff where it's it's dodgy. Uh, this is where you start to get to the stuff where it's like... Um, hmm, you know, it, is this going to be dog shit? Who knows? Spirit Chronicles. You see, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Seire Gensoki. Gensoki. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's see what this one's about. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of... I don't really have much to say about um, that isekai other than it's fairly similar to a sentence of a bookworm or something similar to that. Maybe No Game, No Life, something like that. Uh, but with bureaucracy, I guess. And I don't know. It's interesting. I kind of wish they would go more autistic with it. Like, that's... Like, when he sits down and does paperwork for a long session, I want to know what paperwork he's writing. Like, I want to know the specifics of what... I mean, you, you can give vague details, but, like, I want to know exactly what's going on. That's just my autism, but... Anyway, let's... Let's uh, watch this... Uh, Seire Gensoki. First two episodes of Spirit Chronicles. Uh, this is a great example of the other type of isekai that I was just talking about. I realized I forgot to read the synopsis, um, so I didn't even know it was an isekai until I started watching it and uh, a traffic accident happened within the first 10 seconds and I was like, oh, isekai time. Um, yeah, this is a pretty perfect example of uh, the other type of isekai where the main character is just strong because they just happen to have been imbued with powerful magical powers or whatever uh, however it's not so bad you know those I don't hate those type of isekai uh, definitely not as good as the other one and I don't think I'm gonna be finishing this I might finish it I don't know right now it's kind of like I would probably give it a five or six out of ten maybe I, I'm kind of 50-50 on whether I want to continue watching it or not, basically. Uh, because some of the... Okay, I'll put it this way. It's 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 good if you watch it on 1.25 speed, which I figured out. Uh, if you watch it on just normal speed, it's too slow and boring. But if you watch it on 1.2... And 1.5 speed is too fast. 1.25 speed will make the show less boring, and you can get to the good parts. Um... But actually, no, I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna continue watching this. So I'll, I'll mark it as watching. I'll give it one more episode, but uh, maybe when when the next one comes out. But uh, I am not particularly sure I'm gonna be finishing that one. Okay, now we're on to the new Madhouse show, Sunny Boy, which is quite funny. <laughs> that that's the title. Empty classrooms, boring days. It was supposed to be a normal summer vacation just like any other. Suddenly, the school begins to drift through another dimension, and 36 boys and girls are left there, awakening to their supernatural abilities. Hmm, that sounds interesting. What is this? Who's Shingo Natsume? Who is this? Done anything interesting? Oh, he worked on Bokurano and Boogie Pop. Oh, he he directed that Boogie Pop. Uh, never heard of that. I mean, he's in he worked on NHK as an animator, director, chef again, an animator, director. He seems to be fairly. I mean, he's, he's worked on a lot of good stuff. Like, he's worked on a lot of good stuff, but he doesn't seem to have really been like a... Oh, and he worked on... He did key animation on Mahoraba. That's neat. Alright, well, I'm, I'll, I'll give this a shot and see what I think. Um, Sunny Boy. Without further ado, let's watch the first episode of Sunny Boy. All I can see is... Uh, Sasuga Madhouse. Sasuga Madhouse. Man, it's been. A, I feel like it's been a while. Like, I guess Azoken was the last like 
interestingly experimental TV anime, but even Azokin wasn't that experimental. Like, this is maybe, like... I don't know, I don't remember the last time there was a really good, like, artsy, fucking psychological, stylized, weird TV anime that, like, I don't know, it's not gonna get any traction because it's not fucking isekai, is it? It's not a manga adaptation, is it? It might be a manga adaptation, I don't know. No, it's an anime original. Um, it's a... It's it's a pretty far far it's pretty far out concept pretty far out concept, but uh, I would I would definitely recommend checking this out even just as a curiosity because it's pretty unique even just for some of the art like some of the cinematography was really interesting a little bit I get various influences like. There's definitely some, like, um, Masaki USA influence. There's definitely some... I don't know, I'm getting little bits of, like, uh, Wes Anderson, maybe? And it's really interesting. Really, like, aesthetically interesting show. And narratively interesting, I suppose. It's very metaphorical. Uh, definitely gonna be watching more of this, because that is... That is an interesting experimental art house, you know me and my my art house shit. I'm all about it. Okay, now I strongly um, believe that that is the last of the good anime. <laughs> but I hope I can be proven wrong. Actually, um, oh no, did you just get a shot of my belly? Did you just get a brief blurry frame of my... It's, it's fucking ridiculously hot in the UK and my computer is also eating up the room and... I'm not wearing a shirt because it's too fucking hot. Even with my fan on, full blast pointed directly at me. It doesn't do shit. I mean, it, it does a little bit, but it's still ridiculously hot. Anyway, this one I was interested in just because of the lolly. <laughs> but uh, other than that, yeah, nothing else looks good. Not that I remember anyway. Maybe this. Whatever the fuck this is. No, this is not going to be good. I don't know why I thought that would be good. Uh, this, maybe? I've seen this girl in the manga once. Like, I've seen screenshots on 4chan and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't reckon, reckon we're going to get anything particularly good. Although, um... Nah, you know what? I I will hold my opinions until I have, I have the evidence to back my opinions up. Speaking of which, let's watch Shinigami Shinigami Botchan Tokuro Maid. Uh, curses a witch, but uh, cursed by a witch as a child, young Jew, kill everything he touches, forced to move. Uh, this is not a show I would watch if I just saw it randomly on Mal, but hey, maybe it's interesting. Uh, I see, I see Booba. I reckon that's gonna be a part of the show. I reckon that's gonna be a big part of the show. What tags is this? Comedy, supernatural, drama, romance. All right, well, let's give this a shot. Shinigami Botchan Tokuro. I'm assuming that's pronounced Botchan. I don't know. Uh, Tokuro made. Let's. Uh, Okay, here's a question. What's the point of using Romaji to write the title in Japanese if you're just gonna write maid instead of meido? M-E-I-D-O, which is how you would write maid in Romaji. Like, that's that's an error, really. Because, like, that's, that's technically the incorrect spelling if you're gonna go by... Anyway, sorry. Uh, let's watch this stupid fucking show. It's the first episode of the Duke of Death and his maid, and it was interesting. It's a 3D CG anime, which I didn't guess, looking at the poster. And, um, the core of the anime is the romance between these two characters, as you might have guessed from the title and poster. Uh... I think it should have the etchy tag. It's not like super etchy, but it's definitely got etchiness in it. 
I don't think I'm going to finish this one. Uh, but I don't hate it. I'd give it a five. Uh, mostly just because it seems like the biggest plot point of the thing is mostly going to be like... Okay, if we're talking about Screenwriting 101, the main character, the, the, the Duke, his want is that he wants to get rid of his curse so he can touch people. But his need is that he needs to, you know, um, get jiggy with this girl. <laughs> needs to form a romantic relation. Needs to, their rom the romance needs to bloom and he needs to learn to value himself um, and see that he has enough self-worth to be loved by her. That's That's the sort of thing that's going to happen, but it's just going to be 12 episodes of nothing happening, is the game, my guess. Uh, so, yeah, maybe check this out if you're interested in a sort of comedic uh, 3D CG quirk, kind of quirky anime. It's quite well animated. I, I like the art style. It looks better, like, the poster doesn't do it justice, the art style. Like, it looks better in CG and movement. Uh, maybe check this out. I, I'm probably not going to finish it. But, uh, yeah, maybe check this out if you're curious. Uh, okay, next up. I need to start blasting through these. Is, uh, Shiroi Suna no Aquatope. That's an interesting title. Uh, Kukuru Misaki no... An 18-year-old high school, working at Aquarium, former idol, Fuka Days Aquarium... Crisis of closing. Oh, this looks. This looks. This looks. Um, like some something. Looks like something. Could be good. Could be interesting. Um, I don't know. That this seems this. The thing I was gonna say this looks too self-serious, but a lot of the times the by like the synopsis on Mao Mao is uh, like doesn't give a good idea of the tone of the show. So. Let's watch Shiroi Suna no Aquatope, uh, the first episode at least, or uh, however much of it I get through, and I shall report back to you with more details as they are uncovered. More on this story at 8. I just watched the first episode of this anime, and it was pretty good, but I, with my infinite anime knowledge and psychic abilities and game sense of the anime landscape predict that this is the type of show that descends into over-the-top pointless high school melodrama uh, uh, about a third of the way through episode three at the end of the first act of episode three that is my prediction episode three is not out yet i've only watched episode one but my prediction is that at the uh, one third of the way through episode three uh, this show will devolve into pointless melodrama, so I will keep watching until that happens, uh, just so I can prove myself right and feel cool. And if it doesn't happen, then I will also get to watch a cool anime anyway. So, um, uh, sure. Why the fuck not? Uh, this show is about... <laughs> it will try and pretend it's not about this. Uh, it's kind of Ghibli-esque, I would say. But, uh, what this show is really about is, uh, a woman who, uh, is, uh overstressed from overwork in a high-pressure industry um, who quits her job and then has what I can only describe as a psychotic break where she flies to Okinawa on a whim, running away from her family, uh, and then hallucinates various events um, to do with fish. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> That's not actually... The tone of it is more like Ghibli, but that's really what's happening here in my my head. That's what's happening here. Uh, I'll just pretend that makes it more funny. Anyway, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I, I suppose, uh, you know, I recommend this show to all the lesbians out there. You know, shout out my lesbians. You'll like this show. Uh, I don't know why. It gives off lesbian vibes, you know. Sometimes these things just happen. It gives off sapphic vibes. Shout out them lesbians. Recommend it. All right, next up. Uh, we need to begin, you know, I would have watched episode 2, but we need to really begin through these, because it's uh, almost my bedtime. Mahoka uh, Koko no Yutose. The Honor Magic High School. Oh, this is a spin-off of 
um, the irregular at Magic High School. Uh, I'm not going to watch this because I haven't seen the irregular at Magic High School. Peach Boy Riverside. I don't want to watch this. This looks fucking awful. But hey, maybe it will surprise me. I've said that a few times. Um, and if it's bad, I can always drop it halfway through the first episode. So, Peach Boy Riverside. Let's see. Uh, so, there's a bright and cheerful princess who wants to go on an adventure because she's bored of her tiny little castle in the countryside. One day, a horde of vicious demons come to her doorstep, threatening everyone's lives. Saved by a lone traveler who slays them with Peach Eye. That's a stupid fucking name for a thing. Then she goes on. Okay, this looks stupid, but hey! Time to watch Peach Boy Riverside. That is one of the worst titles I've ever heard in my life. But time to watch Peach Boy, Boy Riverside. Uh, oh, it's an actual rabbit. What? Okay. When you have to watch Peach Boy Riverside or whatever, this is when you you require a strong uh, screwdriver. Maybe this will be decent. Who knows? This will probably be the last anime I watched today. Um, hmm. How do I... How do I explain everything? Um, okay. So basically, I didn't realise... Okay, there's two problems. Two, maybe three things I need explaining. Okay, first of all, if you're not aware of this fact, I'm pausing on boobs. This is a good thing to pause on. If you're not aware of this fact, uh, there have been construction works going on next door for the past uh, eight months, I think, seven and a half months. Uh, very loud, and they start at 8 a.m. every day. Um, which is a problem because me, as a, you know, I'm a night owl. I like being awake at night, I like staying up late, I'm a neat, you know. You know how it is, you gotta stay up late when you live this lifestyle. It's a problem when you get woken up by extremely loud drilling. It also happens to be right next to where my room is, like pretty much as I'm in the worst position for this this problem. There's like you, you, I just will get woken up at 8 a.m. every day. There's nothing I can do about it. Earplugs don't work. It's just too loud. Uh, so basically, I need to be going to sleep fairly soon. Even if that wasn't the case, uh, and I could just say, even though I didn't get that much sleep last night, maybe I would just say, fuck it, I'm just gonna get not much sleep tonight in the name of anime. However, I am meeting up with a friend tomorrow for the first time in fucking forever. I'm actually meeting up with an IRL friend. Uh, I guess it's not the first time in forever. It actually wasn't that long ago that we met up last time. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, but I got an IRL friend coming over. He's he's gonna play Mario 64 while I watch because I just love Mario 64 and I want to share it with my friend who's never played it before. Um, that's gonna be fun. But I can't be too tired because I need to be, you know, social tomorrow. So that's a problem. So basically... And the third problem is that I didn't fucking realize how much anime there is. There's so much anime. Why why do they make so much? Make fewer anime. Come on, who's who's only I am watching all of this. No one is watching all of this. Like who come on. Anyway, uh so I suppose uh I suppose this I'm not sure if I'm going to Actually, I don't think I'm going to split this video into two parts. I considered it, but I think I'm just going to do this as a really long video. So, um we're just going to have a long video, but this will be the last one I You know, I don't know if I'll watch it today even. But yeah, fuck it. I'll watch the first episode of Peach Boy Riverside and that'll be the last one of this session, and then I'm sure I'll pick this up tomorrow or the day after tomorrow whenever I'm free. Uh, to pick it up again. And I'll continue from the next anime down to the very bottom of fucking Ore Tsushima or whatever. No, it keeps going. It just keeps going.
there's way too much anime that be being made. There's way too much. They need to make less anime. Uh, so yeah, something about what, what I just said. Anyway, let's get back to watching fucking Peach Boy Riverside. God, that's such a terrible name for a show. But yeah, I can't... I've been doing this all day, basically. Like, pretty much. And I... You know, I haven't finished the, every episode from the season, which is not that surprising. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, uh, if I point my camera at that any longer, I'll get a copyright strike. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, my thoughts on this anime, it's fucking stupid. However, I like the furry bunny girl. Cute, but I especially like the fact that she carries a mallet. That's so cool. I, if you don't know, hey, a little bit of j j Japanese culture 101. So, you know how in the West we, s I don't know if people say this really, but the sort of like the myth is that there's a, there's a man in the moon, right? If you, if you look at the moon, you can sort of see a man. I, I never saw it myself. I don't know what people were going on about, but that's apparently a thing. In various parts of the world, they say different things are in the moon because different people see different parts of the moon and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I think in China it's a crab. In Japan, it's a rabbit pounding mochi with a with a mallet. Uh, so the 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 fact that it's a, a bunny rabbit girl with a, a mochi pounding ha mallet hammer thing, I don't know. I just think that's neat. I, and I also like the fact that she's in a fucking, like, Seifuku sailor uniform for no reason in the middle of a fantasy world. Like, that's epic. The rest of the show can go fuck itself. It's stupid. But I like her. She should be in a better show. Fucking Momotaro? I should have fucking known. I should have known it was fucking Momotaro. Uh, of course, no wonder the bunny with the mallet, Japanese folklore, yeah, makes sense, the demons are called Oni, of course it's fucking, the show's called fucking Peach something, the show's called fucking Peach Boy Riverside, which is obviously a reference to Momotaro, she's, a uh, this, this, this subtitle that you're seeing, Came Down the River, the question that they're asking is, what if more than one peach came down the river? If you don't know the story of Momotaro, it's a famous Japanese folklore story about a boy in a peach. It's, it's fucking weird, it's folklore, you know, who defeats Oni. Go look it up, it's a, you know, traditional old Japanese story. Are you fucking kidding me? This is the dumbest show I've ever seen in my fucking life. Okay. My opinions, I'm, I'm dropping this right now. I'm giving it a four. It's it's approximately a four. Oops, I closed the wrong tab. Uh, I, I would give it a four. Maybe a three, if I'm being harsh. On a bad day, I would give it a three. But I would, I'll give it a four. It's bad, but it's not very bad. And the reason I don't class it as very bad is I like the bunny girl's character design. I, I like the fact that they're in a fantasy world and she's just wearing a school uniform for absolutely no reason. And I like the fact that her character design looks nothing like any of the, like, fairly, like, it looks super cartoony in a world of, like, fairly realistic character designs. I, I just like her. I don't like the show. I like her character design. That's it. So that's the only thing keeping it from being a fuck. You know, a good character design can save a show for me. I'm a sucker for a good character design, what can I say? I'm not even a furry. Well, if I like a furry character, does that make me a furry? I don't know what the definition of being a furry is. I'm not generally a furry, but I like this rabbit girl. She's cute. She kicked things well. She in bad show, but she wears school uniform, which is funny and epic. Uh, okay, I suppose, yeah, I can't really recommend Peach Boy Riverside, but it's very funny that it turned out to be fucking Momotaro. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, if I was, I don't know, like, if I was to make it equivalent, it would be kind of like if, um... It would be kind of like if at the end of the first episode of a TV show, 
it, 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 imagine the first episode of, of Game of Thrones, a narrator comes along and is like, Jon Snow. We've all heard the story of uh, fucking Jack and the Be- Beanstalk. We've all heard the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. But what if there were two beans? <laughs> like, that's pretty much what happens here. It's the same sort of thing. Momotaro is almost like the same sort of thing as Jack and the Beanstalk. It's like... I don't know. It's very, very funny to me that that's the, what they chose to go with. Of all fucking folklore tales to go. It's very funny to me. <laughs> and then the main character is like... Jack and the, the Bean Stock 2 Electric Boogaloo. Stupid. Absolutely retarded. I love I love the fact that anime does stuff like this. Like, I, I don't like this show, but I love the fact that, that like, a hundred people sat down and worked on this show, despite the fact that it's fucking stupid. Um, so, yeah, I will not be continuing to watch Peach Boy Riverside. But, uh... Mildly entertaining, I will say that much. Maybe not for not for the right reasons, but it was entertaining. I will get back to you um, soon, at some point within the next few days, and we're gonna watch Tsukimichi Moonlight Fantasy, I suppose. Uh, this looks like Steven Universe. This screenshot just looks like Steven Universe. I I, I don't know why, but it does. Uh, anyway, so far, the only shows I can recommend, I suppose I should do some sort, I mean, even though we're gonna, we haven't finished this video yet, so far, the shows I can recommend, Sunny Boy, I definitely recommend this if you like art, art house weird stuff, this one if you're a lesbian, and, uh, uh, fucking fucking Bokutachi no remake. I, I think those are the only shows I can really recommend so far. Uh, I don't know why this is so popular, because this is dog shit. This is, like, really not worth watching at all. Um, I suppose Maid Dragon's probably good. But, uh, yeah, the only shows I can really recommend are Bokutachi no remake and Sunny Boy as, like, the standouts from the season so far. Uh, catch you when I decide to fucking finish this video. It is now time to, as promised, watch Tsukimichi Moonlight Moonlit Fantasy. Um, it's another fucking isekai. Three isekais this season. Is Dragon Maid an isekai? Is Sunny Boy an isekai? Is Dragon Maid a reverse isekai? Is that what Dragon Ma it's all very strange. It's all very E and very Sekai. Let's uh, watch this terrible show, shall we? Let's do that. So this show, I'm pretty sure just used like a meme sound effect. I don't know what the origin of this sound effect is, but um, here, I'll just play it for you. It's kind of quiet just because ThinkPad speakers, but I'll, I'll get, this is why I'm filming right next to the, yo, this effect. Oh, that's a isn't that like a meme sound effect from something? I forgot what the what it's from. I don't know, I thought that was notable. I think I'm gonna drop this one. I'll finish this episode, but I'll just give my thoughts now because I have thoughts already. It's this is like Um How do I even explain this? I, I can't explain it because the show doesn't want to explain itself. It wants to have its it wants to have its cake and eat it too. It wants to be a subversion of the overpowered isekai protagonist. Uh, in a, It wants to be Konosuba. Like, it wants to be a comedy take on an isekai where the protagonist isn't that strong and uh, the isekai life is kind of shit. But it also wants to be wish fulfillment for teenagers. So the main character is both overpowered and weak at the same time. They just couldn't decide which one they were doing, and so they did both. Which is baffling and makes no sense. So what happens is, the main character is transported to the goddess of this other world. The goddess looks at him and is like, oh no, your face is ugly. I'm, I'm only going to give you the power to speak with non-humans and understand their language, which is just a plot convenience. 
Um, but just get out of my sight. I'll find another hero who isn't so disgustingly ugly. He looks like a normal guy. He's not that ugly, but, you know, anime. Uh, and then as he's, like, falling from the sky, another god comes down to him and is like, oh, actually, you're going to be really powerful in this world just because... Um, it, convenient reasons that like being on earth like neuters your magical power but then he gets so it's like okay so they're trying to say he has no power but then also he's really powerful and in the first scene when he's on the isekai place he easily defeats a powerful monster but then he does like a magic test to find out how good he is at magic and he's only level one which is the lowest level, obviously. But then, how was he able to suddenly be that physically strong? Like, physical strength and magic are different things. So, like, I, the way it was explained by the god made it seem like Earth was, like, very spiritually low. So, that would enhance his, like, spiritual, magical powers. Not his. Fi it doesn't make any fucking sense. They're just trying to do two things that are contradictory, uh, and it's stupid. This is terrible. This is like a 2 or 3 out of 10. Uh, we're going to be dropping it right now. Um, it looks bad as well, like the art style's bad. It's just all bad. I'll, I'll give it a very... I'll give it a 3. I'm, maybe it's horrible. I know it's very bad for a fact. I'm just deciding if it's horrible. I'll give it a three. I'll be nice to it and give it a three. Okay, on to the next anime, which is... Um, where were we? What was that? That was... That was this one. We've already done this one, so... Next is Jahi-sama... Jahai-sama... This one, the Silverlink show. Jahi-sama... Wa Kujikanai. Once respected as the demon realm's second greatest authority, the demon king's aid, Jahi Wood, uh, magical girl, magic gem, demon world is destroyed, survives, lost all her powers. Okay, it's the devil as a part timer, but with a cute girl instead. Yeah, it's just that. Okay, we figured that out at least pretty quickly. Um. Wait, it has no ratings, so maybe it's not actually out yet. Oh yeah, it's not like not yet aired. Okay. Next, <laughs> oh this is the second season, Megami Yo no Yobo Kun. Um, Nagumi Koshi is a twelve-year-old boy who was abandoned by his father. Blah blah blah. But, oh, it's a Shota anime. Ooh, interesting. I can get down with a Shota anime from time to time. Probably not going to be very good, though. Is this, like, a short? No, it's 25 minutes per episode. Alright, well, let's see how this goes. Hey, that might have been one of the worst shows I've ever seen. I feel perfectly comfortable giving this a 2. Might even give it a 1. Uh, dropped. If you want to watch a Shota anime, watch... Um, this one. Nope, not that one. This one. Sunohara so no kan dinin san. I don't know how to fucking pronounce it. But watch this one. It's also not that great, but it's better than Megami Ryo no whatever the fuck. It's better than this. Okay, next anime. Oh, I suppose I should actually give some sort of, like, I should, I should talk about what the show is. I don't know what the point of this video is. Like, it, is the point of this video to give you an idea of what the show is. It's, it's like, bad softcore porn. Like, it's not even very good. Um, and, like, there's titties. There's plenty of titties. Titties for all. Everyone gets, everyone gets titties. If, if you're, if, that's basically all the show has to offer. And, uh, there are better options if that's what you want to see. Um, yeah, unless, I mean, if you're really 
obsessed with watching all of the Shota self-insert anime in the world, then maybe you would like to watch this. And I don't have anything against, like, fan service ecchi anime. This is just not a very good one. Um, like, generally, in my personal... Like, I would say that uh, if you're going to have a fan service ecchi anime, you have to bring more to the, to the table than just being a bad version of hentai which already exists. You have to bring, like... Uh, something extra to the table bring like a unique concept a unique setting uh interesting or unique characters some sort of interesting narrative element like anything in addition to just tits you know but this show doesn't do that so um yeah i can't really recommend it okay next up is uh this show, which seems to be uh, yet another isekai. Yep, it's another isekai. Uh, Cheat Kusushi no Slow Life. Now, this is, I actually saw this. This is actually the reason I decided to do this video. Because I saw something, like I saw this, and basically, it's an isekai where the guy just lives a slow life running a drugstore in a remote village in the, the isekai world instead of, you know, doing isekai stuff, defeating the Mao Sama, the demon lord guy. Uh, and that sounds like an interesting concept to me. Uh, so I thought maybe this is like Fushigi no Maho Fun Fun Pharmacy. I'm pretty sure it's not, but uh, I'm willing to check this out, just because that's, like, interesting. Uh, I suppose we'll see what the fuck this is all about, then. You can never trust Mal- you know, most people would look at this and be like, 6.21 on Mal? There's no way I'm watching that. You can never trust Mal scores. This is one thing that you will learn very quickly, if you're me, if you- if you live inside of my brain. It's that you have to be this person. You have to watch every show to know if it's good or not. You can't just trust Mal because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And you can't trust A. You can't trust anyone. You can only trust yourself. And that's that's who I'm, I am trusting right now by watching this ostensibly bad show. Let's get it. World's worst decision, most distracting thing of all time. Who decided to give her hair that has transparency? That sticks out of the top of her head. Who decided to make her fucking ahoge a fucking antenna? What the fuck is this? And why does she look like that? <laughs> look at the top of his head! <laughs> Just watched the first episode of Cheat Kusushi no Slow Life Isekai Mitsukuro Drugstore. Uh, or... It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, this is a fascinating show. Okay, firstly, I have to apologize for the look at the top of his head meme earlier. Her hair looks like that because she's a ghost, and that's supposed to indicate the fact that she's a ghost, because she just, you know, you can't have your cute girl looking like anything other than just a regular cute girl, so they have to make some tiny adjustment. I would have... It's very distracting. I would have rather if they'd done the upside down white triangle headband thing that typically denotes ghosthood but this isn't their fault because that's in the original text i i think it's originally i i, I actually haven't figured this out there's a lot of stuff going on there's both a light novel and a manga i'm not sure if the light novel i mean i would assume the manga is an adaptation of the light novel but i don't know really maybe it's a light novel adaptation of the manga um, it's hard to know. Does it, is, can I figure this out? December 25th, 2018. Okay, so the light novel came first. Which is not surprising. Obviously, it's an isekai with a title like that. I was pretty much expecting it to be a light novel. Uh, the art in the light novel looks a lot better than the art in the anime. And that is not surprising. Because this anime was created by... Oops, I didn't mean to do what I just did. Uh, this anime was created by 
Can can I can I get the anime up, please? Oh, for fuck's sake, my hand. this is faster. By EMT Squared. EMT Squared, a studio I'm convinced exists only to make six out of tens. I'm convinced that they there is some they have some business model which requires them to make six out of ten shows. I haven't seen that many shows by them, but I've seen Nyanko Days, which is when I'm trying to um, think about what a six out of ten is. Nyanko Days is like my uh, well, I don't know what you would call it, like my um, standard measurement of what makes a 6 out of 10. Uh, my fan is much louder than I thought it was because I had my headphones on this whole time. I'm not turning it off though because it's really hot, so... Uh, yeah, Nyanko Days is like my, my watermark level of what a 6 out of 10 is. Uh, and I've also seen the first two episodes of Alice or Alice, which is also maybe a 5 out of 10. Uh, and they also made uh, this one, Kuma Kuma Bear, which I don't think I watched, but for some reason sticks out to me. Like, I don't know what happened to it. Did I watch it? I don't remember. I don't know why I didn't watch it, or did I? I don't know. Something about that, like, I feel like I have some relation to this show, but I don't remember what it is. Uh, and now they've made this, which is another 6 out of 10 show. Uh, it's all very confusing. Uh, but my guess would be that they basically exist to adapt, like, less popular... Because normally only the, like, very top echelon of popular um, light novels and manga get adapted into anime because obviously they want to guarantee profitability. My guess would be that Studio EMT, or whatever the fuck this thing is called, EMT Squared, exist to adapt the one step down from best or most popular. They exist to adapt the ones that are like one step down from the most popular ones, and they do it cheaply, and that's their business model. They probably get the rights very cheaply to adapt them and produce very cheap shows, and therefore they don't need to make that much money back in order to you know, break even or whatever. That would be my guess at their business model. Uh, however, when I say cheaply made, like the word cheaply made is generally used disparagingly, right? When you say something's cheaply made, it is saying that it's of low quality, of low effort. But something can be delicious food with cheap ingredients. You know, you could like, I don't know, pasta. Pasta was like peasant food back in the day and everyone likes pasta, right? Or like, there are, there's many foods out there that have cheap ingredients, but are, uh, uh, you know, delicious. And that's the sort of thing I mean. Like, just because it's animated on, you know, it's in a low frame rate with maybe not the best uh, knack for natural movement and stuff like that, and, you know, feels a bit rushed, and the voice acting isn't the best, and the script isn't completely tightened up doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a terrible show at the end you you have shows like uh that one that was the one about the detective that i reviewed earlier in this very video which although also looked bad and also looked cheaply made uh was not as cheaply cheap looking as this show but much worse because uh the plot was much worse and start the characters were much less interesting and stuff like that uh, now, I'm not saying this is an amazing show. In fact, I'm probably going to drop it. What I am saying is, this is, to me, like Koro Taku, where it's just like an incredibly, incredibly specific niche of a niche of a niche of a niche, and uh, made by, like, five people. It probably looks like shit because it was probably made by five people working 20 hours a day. Uh, let's be real here, the state of the anime industry being as it is. Uh, oh yeah, a Amaero... No, wait, I haven't seen that. I'm getting that confused with Amaero something else. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying this is an amazing show. I'm saying uh, it's interesting. It's interesting, uh, and... Uh, it's got a charm to it. It's, it's just got a certain charm to it. Like, like the fact that it's made uh, cheaply or whatever kind of makes me want it to succeed. It's kind of like got a, a gap my way to it. It's got a certain, like, I want I want this show to do well because I feel like it was probably made by five people and 
you know, I hope they do well. On the other hand, they have some fairly pop like this to to 300,000 users. That's fairly popular. I've never heard of this. Uh so who knows? And maybe their shows are all terrible. In fact, I think they are probably fairly terrible. I I do want to see what Kuma Kuma Bear is though cuz that seems interesting. But uh Oh, do you know why I probably know about Kuma Kuma Bear? Because it, it has a Hikikomori main character, and I, I was reading about shows with Hikikomori main characters at a certain point, and I probably came across it back then. That explains it. Okay, uh, b back to talking about the show I'm supposed to be talking about. Uh, I don't know if I can recommend it. It, uh, it uh, um, But it, it is like core otaku. Like, the, you're never going to be able to show this to a normie, and that normie would get anything out of it. Uh, like, all of your normie friends would just think this is, like, of completely no value. And normie otaku, light otaku, whatever you want to call them, redditors, definitely would not check this out. And anyone with taste <laughs> would probably not check this out. But if you're an obsessive and just watch every anime, or like, I don't know. I, I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about, because it's not a very good show, and I'm trying to kind of like... It's okay, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you the feeling this show gives me. It's not a very good show, but I want to like go to bat for it anyway. It gives me the feeling that like, it's yes, sure, it's not a very good show, but I kind of want to like, like defend it, even though I have no reason to defend it. That's, that should give you a, a, a... Maybe that can make you understand what I think of this show. I think it, it shouldn't have been as... I should, don't think it should be in the setting it is. I would much rather if this was... Um, half-length episodes, like uh, 15 minutes or like 10 minute episodes uh, with the higher like production values I, I think it would work better in that format but uh, you know, it is what it is maybe check it out if you want a somewhat unique isekai concept the isekai stuff doesn't play into it at all like, there is absolutely, they don't even show him getting transported to the other world, they just say it in a voiceover at the beginning, uh, and it never pl plays into the first episode at all. Maybe it will come into the plot later, but it do doesn't matter at all. Um, yeah, I'm kind of struggling with this on whether I wanted to keep watching it, whether I want to recommend it. Um, I'd say, okay, I'll, I'll mark this as... Uh, hardcore Moe Isekai Otaku only. That's that's what I'll mark this as. Okay. Um, back to summer 2021 anime. This is still EMT squared. Bring me back to summer. What the fuck is happening to my computer? Oh, I'm retarded. Is what's happening? Okay. Next up is. MayQ Black Company. Isn't this the second Silverlink show this season? Wasn't there one like... Didn't I just... Yeah, this one is also Silverlink. Silverlink, do, they, think they, they think they can do two shows in one season? That's bold. That's pretty damn bold. Uh, Kinji, who acts lax. Is this another isekai? It's another isekai, you fucking serious? I thought this was a meme. I thought that, like, oh, every anime these days is an isekai was a meme. But no, this is, like... How many isekai have there been? One, two... This is a reverse isekai. This is an isekai. No. Is it? I don't remember. No, this is not an isekai. This is not an isekai, is it? I, I actually don't remember. I don't remember anything about this except finding it funny that it was a Momotaro thing. It's not an isekai. I remember now. It's just fantasy. So, two, three... Technically four, on if you really want to go by the definition of isekai is when you're transported to another world. I suppose they are technically transported to another world. Four, five... Six, this is an isekai. That's it. 
six isekai, oh, seven, seven isekai, and I haven't even finished. Seven, that's just ridiculous. Uh, this might be an isekai, I don't know, I haven't seen the first season. Could be, I, and I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there's even more isekais down here. Anyway, where were we? Let's. What, is this another? S yeah, this is where we are. Okay. Make you black company. Um, isekai, not in the fantasy of a hero, shoved into a terrible job, but now enslaved by an evil mining company. Learned the meaning of hard work. Okay. Silverlink is another six out of ten studio, but I kind of like a lot of Silverlink show. Well, some Silverlink shows. I've always said one day I'm gonna deep dive Silverlink and watch every Silverlink show. Um, I don't know why, but I just have an urge to. Like I've always kind of wanted to watch Dead Ma Death March to the Parallel World Isekai, even though like I know it's bad. Rhapsody, I mean, not Isekai. I, I, I even though everyone, even though like. There is no evidence to show that it is not a terrible show. I've just always kind of wanted to watch it. Um, and uh, didn't they make Slow Start? I remember liking Slow Start. They made Oni Eye. That's a show that exists. Um, they made Net No Non Biori. That's a show that exists. Oh yeah, they made Prisma Elia, or at least some of it. Oh, they made the show the the show to show that I recommended it earlier. They made they made Yumi or they worked on Yumi Yuri Kumarashi. They made Mitsubishi Colors, which is actually a great show. And uh, oh, and uh, Watamote. Unhappy is a mediocre show. Uh, this looks like a visual novel adaptation. You can just tell from the way it looks that this is an early two thousand visual novel adaptation. Um. Girl for I I this is a two thousand five show, right? No, it's not. Okay. Never mind. Stella no Maho, people like that, right? People like Stella no Maho. Uh people like Back Until Test, right? That's a thing that people like, I think. C three, I've heard people talk about C C three or whatever, C cubed, I don't know how it's pronounced. Two car, that's a show. See, two cars a show that exists. Chiso say get you is a weird fucking show that exists. Like that's a thing that was made by some people. You like you know like what the fuck is any of this? I just want to see it. I just want to see it because what the fuck is any of this? I've always wanted to just watch every Silverlink show. Chivalry of a failed knight, Coco Connect, which I watched. 20 million years ago, back when I was first getting into anime. Watamote, you know, I already mentioned it. It's a studio that exists, and I'm gonna watch their newest show. And I've just decided to drop Make You Black Company. We're gonna give this a 4 out of 10 and drop it after one episode. Why are we gonna do that? This is what I consider to be a genre called blatant manga adaptation. I can't tell you what that genre actually means because I have no idea how I can tell, but somehow I can just tell when something is adapted from a certain kind of manga, like shonen manga. It's I'm pretty sure it's the pacing and like the way that characters are introduced. I like I don't know. Something, there's, so there's something that tips me off. I don't know how I know, it's just like an instinct. I, I checked, by the way, I'm right. I'm always right with this. Um, I can always tell. Like, obviously, depending on what you adapt something from is going to affect the pacing and structure of the story at the end. This is why, as I mentioned a long time ago in my review of Air, uh, Light novel, I mean, visual novel adaptations often end up not working because the format of a visual novel is very, very different uh, with roots and, you know, these sorts of, like, time-rewinding shenanigans that visual novels allow for and the fact that they're much longer than an anime series and the fact that they, you know, 
they, they involve going down a character's route and discuss, you know all of these sort of things that make sense in a visual novel don't make sense in an anime they feel weird and out of place a lot of the time sometimes anime adapt the source material well and um, they compensate for these weirdnesses which is what a good adapt adaptation should do uh, Steins Gate being probably the, uh, the best example uh, but sometimes they do not compensate and they turn out poorly um, another example would be the Yonkoma manga format the, f the four panels uh, gaga manga format uh, is essentially the secret source to slice of life anime almost all slice of life anime are adapted from Yonkoma manga most of them not all of them but most of them are adapted from Yonkoma manga and the pacing of slice of life anime is the pacing of Yonkoma manga like the way that slice of life anime feels it feels that way because it is paced around bit 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 punchline like like a Yonkoma and so that's why it works you know there's other stuff like that as well like with light novels and whatever but there's a certain thing about shonen manga you know they they probably adapt perfectly well into anime for people who like shonen manga i cannot stand shonen manga i cannot stand the way characters work in shonen manga i cannot stand the pacing of shonen manga the aesthetics of it I don't like it. I don't like shonen most of the time. And this is a very blatant shonen manga adaptation. Uh, and it's also just bad, even beyond that fact, right? Like, even there are shonen manga adaptations where the pacing and the shonen manga syndrome, I'm just going to call it that. That's a better word for it. Shonen manga syndrome uh, is like impactful, but the show is good enough that I can let it go. Dr. Stone is a good example of that. Dr. Stone is like very much shonen manga syndrome, but also reasonably good enough that I can put it aside. Uh, Slimy Sakai is also a bit like that, although I've begun to grow tired of that show. Um, so yeah. Uh, this show, however, is nowhere near good enough to pull, to distract from the fact, from all the bad stuff. If it was a good show, I wouldn't be talking about this because I wouldn't have noticed it or I wouldn't have considered it important. Uh, the main bad thing about this show, uh, there's two main bad things about the show, the characters and the setting. <laughs> and the third bad thing about the show is the plot. So those are all the things that a show is. <laughs> and uh, they're all bad. Um, the main character is one of the worst main characters I've ever seen in a show. Uh, uh, you're supposed to make a main character sympathetic, or at least sympathetic, even if you don't want to go for a traditional uh, sympathetic main character. You should at least want to root for them as an anti-hero. Uh, this main character is just an asshole, and I want to see him fail, uh, but I want to see him actually fail, not like slightly fail in a comedy way. Um, the main character is a terrible person. Um, it's sort of an unfair bad portrayal of neats he calls himself a neat but he's not a neat he's a landlord like they i know they're functionally the same thing but they're not really the same thing he's rich like being broke is part of being a neat um he he also is like really fit and muscly because he's a shonen protagonist um and the show is trying to convince me that he's never done a day of hard work in his life and doesn't have a work ethic like the second he's on screen in the first fucking frame of the anime you see his like rippling muscles uh y you don't get that way if you don't have a work ethic those two things are incompatible you can't get that fit and muscly without a work ethic the fact that the show is expecting me to believe that is absurd uh he also doesn't feel like a neat at all like he has none of the neat like proclivities uh he, like he's just a regular guy nothing about him like neat is supposed to be his main character trait but nothing about him other than the fact that the show has told me in like a scene exposition scene that he was a neat uh would have you know tipped me off to that so they've made this his main character trait but not extrapolated around what that would actually turn into as a human being uh what it really turns into is he is just very willing to exploit everyone and incredibly selfish and like just an asshole to everyone who isn't himself and not in like a cool loner way or like a 
badass way. Like, there are some characters that can get away with that, that can be the sort of badass about it, and like, yeah, I'm only looking out for myself. Like Joe from Ashton Joe, for example. This guy is not that. He is just a dickhead for no reason. Like, he could be doing better if he wasn't a dickhead. He's just a self-sabotaging dickhead. And I know from the fact that it's a shonen manga that he will never grow as a person because they can't grow as people. Uh, the main girl, I suppose, is cute, but not cute enough to overcome the shittiness of the rest of the show. The setting is incredibly boring and, you know, it tries to be not generic, but it tries so hard to be not generic that it comes back around into being incredibly generic. Uh, it sucks. Don't watch this show. Maybe you'll like it. If you're a shonen fag, you might like it. But I do not like this show, and I'm very... In fact, I'm gonna give this a very bad because uh, I've realized now how much I don't like this show. This show is all about money as well. Like, the entire point of the show is sort of like he, he wants to get money and he sees a lot of value in being rich, which doesn't make any sense if his main character trait is that he's a neat and he lacks work ethic. He, it doesn't make any fucking sense. It's stupid. This show is stupid. I know they're going to try and make him out to be a badass. I'm never going to believe that he's a badass. He just looks like an idiot. He sounds like an idiot. Everything about him is stupid. Um, Higurashi, I'm not going to watch because I haven't seen the other bits of the new Higurashi. Okay, Remain. This looks like a BL show or cute boys show. Uh, quit playing water polo, blah, blah, blah. Oh, good. Okay. So, I'm not... This is not really my thing. Uh... <laughs> This is just not my thing. I don't know why, but it's not really my thing. I've never been able to get into shows like Free and stuff like that. Or even like Haikyuu. Just like boys doing sports is not an interesting concept to me. Uh, regardless of how gay they are, it's just not interesting to me. Sports... I don't know if I've ever enjoyed a sports anime. Ping pong counts, right? Okay, if I, if you count ping pong, I like ping pong the animation. Does um, does a uh, fucking uh, take you count as a sports anime? Cause I like take you. I maybe maybe I just haven't seen any of the good ones. I haven't seen Prince of Tennis. Haven't seen Baby Steps. I haven't seen Aim for the Ace. Um, so, you know, maybe this maybe I've only ever seen bad sports anime. But yeah, let's see. Let's see if this one is going to be the one that grabs me. Let's watch Remain. Uh, it's about water polo. Uh, I also predict a lot of them. Point I predict pointless melodrama in the first episode. Let's see if I'm right. I did. I realized um, I have no idea how the fuck people... Like, I don't know what water polo is. I'm only vaguely aware of how it works. So I thought I should do some research and look up some water polo... I'll watch some water polo so at least I have a vague idea of what the sport is and what the rules are before I watch an anime about it. And uh, the goalkeeper from the Serbian team is called Marko Biac. <laughs> that I thought was funny. Biac is a funny... That's that's the funny word. Anyway, it seems like the, the um, water polo is basically slow motion football in the water with your hands. Uh, weird fucking sport. I, I guess it's like full contact or like partial contact allowed to. I'm gonna watch a little bit more because I'm kind of curious and then I'll get back to watching this anime. I just watched the first two episodes of Remain. Um, I believe I said I'll bet there's pointless melodrama halfway through the first episode or something like that. I was partially right. There was melodrama halfway through the first episode, but it wasn't pointless. It was actually well-motivated melodrama, and it was also brief. Um, it didn't hang on it, but the melodrama was to do with the themes of the entire show, which is that main guy got in a terrible car accident and was in a coma for like a year and a half, or t uh, longer than that. I don't remember. He was in a coma for a long time and he has no memories and it's about dealing with trauma and stuff. So the melodrama actually served a purpose, which is what melodrama should do and it's weird that I have to like say that that's an exception in anime, uh, but yeah. Um, 
honestly fairly fun. I actually enjoyed the first two episodes. Uh, it's uh, it's not like a ten out of ten or anything, but um, yeah, fairly entertaining show, I suppose. As far as sort of sports anime goes, I'm not the most uh, educated or experienced, so I can't don't really have a point of reference to compare this to. But um, I, I I can just I'll just describe the show as like, despite dealing with various serious themes, it remains fun through the whole show. Like they will cut the tension with a joke when they need to. And it's like a joke, it's not like a stupid joke, like it's a joke that the characters are saying because if a real human was in a situation that tense, they might try and break the ice, break the tension with a stupid joke. Like that's a thing that humans do. And the characters in this show have also done that, which is nice. I like it when characters in shows act like people. Like the very, the best example is the very famous line when, um, in, in Hibikiophonium, when um, one of the girls is like, uh, it's painful, but I don't mind the pain. I like the pain. And the other girl's like, that's kind of hot. Like, that's that's like a funny thing that an actual person might say. Like, they do that. I always like it when characters act like people. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't like it when characters act like people. In this particular situation, I liked it when characters acted like people. Some with, with a with like a, a sports anime I don't know with like a shonen with something like this you want the characters to act like people with something like I don't know Nanoha or something or Moe Tan like some real otaku shit you don't want the characters to act like people different characterizations fit different contexts and, and circumstances and story structures and stuff like that um they haven't really played any sports yet, <laughs> two episodes in. Uh, it's mostly, yeah, no sport. well, barely any sports have actually been played. But um, I'm very curious to see where this goes. I don't imagine it's going to be amazing, but I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. I won't drop it immediately. I might drop it later on, but I won't drop it immediately. Um, also, I suppose this is notable. This car, this uh, anime has a a black main main cast member, which is good to see, and you know, rare, so nice. Uh, and he's not a stereotype, which is strange. Having watched anime, mostly where black characters have just been stereotypes all the time, that's that's nice to see. I like that. Uh. I also like the fact that the main character is like a, like in a in a worse show, he would be motivated to get back into playing water polo after his accident and memory loss. He'd be motivated by like, oh, but when I slipped into the water, I just felt at home and it was like the sport was calling to me or like it was like fate or whatever. But instead, he does it to impress a girl, basically, and to win a bet, which is like kind of endearing, you know? Like, I don't want my protagonist to be that up his own ass in this type of show. In other types of show, in more fantastical shows, uh, where the characters and settings are more big and theatrical, then this, that sort of thing works. But this is a grounded high school sports show, so, you know, it wouldn't fit here, and I'm glad they didn't go with it. Uh... Is this an anime original? It doesn't say there's any related manga, right? Huh. Interesting. Uh, yeah. If you want an anime about water polo, maybe check this out. It's also MAPPA. They they have pretty decent production qualities in general, and this is no exception. Pretty good. I, I imagine the big sports scenes when they actually start playing matches will be very impressive. Uh, I don't, or like fairly impressive. They tend to be like that in sports anime where they put all the budget towards the big um, matches and they stretch the matches over, or either, I don't know, normally like a few moments and also matches tend to last for multiple episodes. Uh, but who knows? 
I don't know why I'm saying that. I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about because I haven't watched that much sports anime. Uh, anyway, that was a pleasant surprise. Next up, we are going to be watching... Oh, is this has this started airing yet? No, not yet. Aired. Okay, next up, we're going to be watching... Uh, Uramichi Onisan. Which is... What the fuck is this? Hello, boys and girls. Do you like guys with more than one side to them? What the fuck is this? Gymnastics films was there. Scared of when I was with Oh my god, this sounds awful. This sounds like a very unfunny comedy anime. Uh, Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan. Okay, you know what? Maybe this will be funny. It's a straight, straightforward comedy. Not like a... I, I can get down with a straight comedy. Maybe not, I don't know. Most of the time, straight, straight up comedy anime are not that funny. But maybe this will be funny. Let's see. This is terrible. It's just the same joke over and over again. The joke is... He, the kids expect him to do something and say something uplifting, but then at the end he's like, actually, I, I'm depressed. That's the funny bit about the joke, and it's just that over and over, and it, if you thought that it's not funny, it's bad. Um, I didn't even make it through one episode. That was just painful to watch. It was, pa it was actually painful to watch because the jokes were that unfunny. Is this actually out yet? Currently airing. Maybe the first episode's out. Battle game in five seconds. Um, are there loves games and did to do battlefield battle urban fantasy battle battle royale thing? It's an urban fantasy battle royale thing. Uh, probably adapted from a shonen manga, definitely adapted from a shonen manga. Made by Synergy SP and Vega Entertainment, two companies I've never heard of before. And, um, I do not like these type of shows, even when they're supposedly good. So I do not have high hopes for a bad one but you never know we have been proven wrong already in this video so let's hope for another uh incorrect assumption on my part uh oh two episodes are out as you can see from this uh maybe this will be the best maybe this will be my favorite anime of all time uh Supernatural Battle Royale Urban Fantasy uh, something. Okay, let's find out. Even reference um, that one Yandere show. Like this is that's the that's the screenshot from that show, right? That's the the screenshot from that one show with the Yandere girl that I hate. Whatever the fuck that show's called, you know, you guys know the one. You guys know the one. I think her name might be Yuki or something. I don't remember what her fucking name is. Rika? Is her name Rika? I need to go look this up. You know, you know Gasai. Look, it's the same, like, that's an obvious reference to that, the famous image from this terrible show, right? Which is also a, like, that's clearly a reference, right? Just because you lampshade that you're ripping off another show doesn't make it any better that you're ripping off another show. Okay, so this was pretty much fucking stupid. Uh, first things first, uh, this is... This is wrong. Well, I guess it's not wrong, but it, it feels like a lie. It says, armed with a power no one expects and his brain skills, the new period of intelligence battle begins, implying he's going to solve his problems with smarts. Well, they don't tell you in this is that no, they just give him the most overpowered 
uh, ability. Like now, now he, there's no overpowering people with smarts. They they just give him the most overpowered ability for no reason. Uh, also, uh, let me explain the plot of this. This guy is the world's ultimate gamer. Uh, within the first five minutes of the show, uh, he is just completely okay with murdering a stranger that he's never met in cold blood and smiles while doing so. Because he's the ultimate gamer, of course. Um, and then he's kidnapped and put into a battle royale situation, basically. And everyone gets a unique superpower, and his is just he can turn his arm into a really powerful cannon, which was shown at the beginning of the... Ep like, it was one of the people who run the organization that is running the, the battle royale also has that ability. I suppose you could call it Chekhov's arm cannon. Chekhov's arm cannon at the beginning of the episode. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's fucking stupid and it, there's no intelligence to it and um, it's it's not even well executed and it's it's nothing. It's just a nothing show. It's, it's literally a nothing show. Nothing interesting happens. The battles aren't well animated or interestingly choreographed. There are no clever or original ideas. The superpowers aren't particularly original or unique. Like, I don't know, Horizon or um, uh, Index Railgun, like at least those are kind of a similar type of urban fantasy thing, but the superpower, everyone has a unique superpower, and the main character has the most overpowered superpower, but like everyone's powers are at least original and interesting, even if the battles always result with um, distract the guy until I can punch him to death uh, for, for uh, Index. Um, but yeah, at least everyone has an interesting and unique power in this. They are all very, very generic powers, at least the ones I've seen so far, and I do not have high hopes for more interesting powers later. Uh, it's just a bad show. It's a bad, boring, uh, nothing show. We're gonna put this on a very bad. It's a three. It's, it's not, it's not, um, it's not personal. It's it, it's not offensively bad. There you go. It's not offensively bad, but it is very bad. Uh, yet yeah, I don't really can't really recommend this. There did seem to be some cute girl characters, but uh, you know, um, it, the show is bad. It's, it's not, nothing's gonna change that fact. Okay, next up is Scarlet Nexus. Uh, we're getting pretty close to, well, fairly close to finishing. Actually, we're not that close to finishing at all. Fuck. Oh, it's only going to get worse from here, isn't it? Okay, Scarlet Nexus. It's adapted from a mobile phone game, but it is Sunrise, and Sunrise are Sunrise, so maybe they'll be good. Uh, grotesque organisms called Others have begun eating people to take down this new enemy the other suppression force is formed saved by this elite team as a child psychokinetic Yuito withstands the training to enlist on the other hand prodigy Kasane was scouted for her abilities um, but Kasane's dreams to tell her strange Kasane's dreams tell her strange things dragging the two into an unavoidable fate interesting Actually, that's not very interesting at all. Let's see what we can tell from the thumbnail. The very, very observant among you may have noticed that I'm using Firefox and not Cube Browser. That's simply for ad blocking reasons. Uh, sci fi setting, sword combat, Uniforms make me think there might be even some high school element that will be forced in at some point that like, oh, you've been enlisted into this training program. Now you have to go to the special high school that is for this training program. Um, tsundere. One of these girls is going to be a generic tsundere, either the main girl or this girl. This girl has twin tails, which normally is a hint at tsundere-ness. Um, but in these type of shows, normally the main heroine is the Tsundere, so who knows? Uh, it could be, it's either white haired or red haired girl, we're not sure yet. Um, Alright, let's give this a, a watch. 
The soundtrack during the battles is really interesting. Maybe, maybe you can go look it up yourself. I don't know if it'll be on YouTube yet since this is a currently airing show pretty new. But uh, it has like a distorted... It's like a techno beat. Like type beat. With like electronic bleepy bloops. With like arpeggiated things. But then there's like a distorted, noisy, like fuzz pedal violin, or maybe it's a cello. I think, yeah, it sounds more like a cello, maybe. I'm not sure if it's a cello or a violin. Maybe it's a viola. I don't know. But uh, that's a sound I haven't heard before, and it sounds kind of fucking sick. It's like out there, like it's a weird, like he's doing like big slides and dissonant fucking uh melodies it's interesting the show's terrible but that violin or whatever is sick seems like the composer is this guy this is website and he's like a sh he makes shochu <laughs> like he's a composer you can see him doing his his like conducting a fucking orchestra or whatever but he also makes like shochu, which is like a, a alcoholic beverage. Like that, I think that's his main thing. This is his only credited work on Mao. Like that's all he's done. This the sound director. Oops, this guy. Uh, this guy. Like this is the only thing he's done music for. Okay, shouts out then. Shouts out to him. The show's... Sorry, sneezed. The show is terrible, uh, by the way. Don't watch it. Um, the OP kind of bangs, though. They're all cigarettes. You can always listen to that. But, no, this is, this is kind of a terrible show, which is what I was expecting. And I was right that it is like a, a kind of school setting, because of course it is. <laughs> It's a little bit. It's not fully school setting. It's not like uh, Astro School level, but it's close. Um, yeah, very ge very generic. Everything about it is just generic. Like generic monsters, generic world. Everything is generic and uninteresting. Uh, Magia Records second season. I haven't seen the first season. Love Live. I am not caught up on Love Live. Uh, so I don't know if I'll understand what's going on, but maybe... Do you reckon I should watch the... I don't like Love Live. I mean, I know I'm not going to like it because I don't like Love Live, so... There's no point in watching it to see if it's good because I'm... I know I'm not going to like it already. Uh, okay, Nighthead 2041. This might be the first, like... 80s nostalgia type thing I've ever seen from an anime. Oh, it's 3D CG. Oh no, oh no. Oh no. But like that kind of looks. I mean, I suppose it's just styled after. I mean, I don't know. Everything these days. Or everything three years ago. Is this like a. I guess it's not a sequel, but there's another Nighthead anime called Nighthead Genesis. From 2006. It's a sequel to an obscure show from 2006. What is this? Adaptation from what? From a manga from 1996. What the fuck is going on here? What is going on here? Okay, so there was a there was a manga in 1996 called Nighthead. <laughs> And then a reboot of that manga with a tie in anime called Nighthead Genesis, which no one has seen and is probably not very good. And now, randomly, a cyberpunk 3D CG adaptation of that property. Okay, that's kind of sick. I mean, I'm, I, I think it's going to be terrible, but like, that's such a weird thing to happen. That's kind of sick. And I. That, like, that, whoa. Like, what? 
<laughs> like what? Who, who's Shirogumi? They not, this kind of looks like the style of maybe the the get. Oh no, never mind. Oh, they've done lots of stuff. That looks like um. I was gonna say that looks like Akio Watanabe character designs. So let's see if I'm right. I'm probably wrong. I see Akio Watanabe everywhere, even when he's not involved. I'm. I'm I, I've just, I, I, I started overcorrecting for Akio Watanabe. Yeah, it's not, it's not him. I, I, I started like being like, how did I not notice that that's Akio Watanabe character designs? And then I realized, and so then I started overcorrecting. That's a sequel to this, which looks like a something. It is, I was fucking right. I was fucking right, see? I'm fucking, I know, I I know what the fuck, okay, ha ha. <laughs> I was fucking right. I was fucking right. I, I, I can spot his character designs from 10 fucking miles away. Okay, I did it. They did a Dragon Quest movie? Some Doraemon stuff <laughs> this is weird this is a can see alter hmm this looks interesting I don't care about fucking nighthead 24 actually I do because that's also cool but this looks like some weird experimental shit Maybe it's not. Maybe it's fairly normie and it's just... I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going on right now. This is this is a whole weird thing. This is a whole ass weird thing. Uh, anyway, let's watch this. So we got this weird studio. Which has made a bunch of... Like, what is this? What the fuck is going on? This weird CG studio... Which apparently worked on this, whatever that is, a music video for an idol group. This is really weird. They did some CG dance scenes for Idol Master, which I shoot. Oh, they made Nan Nyanbo? They made Nyanbo? Really? Okay. I'm kind of curious to see what this Etotama thing is. What is this? This doesn't look 3D CG. God knows what the fuck is going on. Alright, let's watch Nighthead 2041. So we've got this weird studio making this weird adaptation of a weird manga. That's, I mean, hey, this is, this is the sort of shit that, that you find in the depths of Mal. This is why I'm making this video, to find the weird shit like this. So, I don't know, this is, this is kind of gratifying but also I have very little hope for this show. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on? Is this like a weird religious propaganda anime? It's set in a dystopian future. The worship of gods and buddhas is a thought crime and it will destroy your life and you have big adverts billboards that say the world is physical with Minecraft world. What is going on? No, no faith. <laughs> That's such a weird setting. What is, what is, what is happening? So this doesn't make any sense. They're hiding behind this pillar, looking this way and this way, with the bad guys here, here, and here. Right, they wouldn't hide behind this pillar if the bad guys weren't on the other side of the pillar. And they're clearly looking sideways as if they're trying to make sure no one's peeking around the corner of the pillar. 
But then in the next shot, this, this guy's shooting directly to the side without moving. And this guy's just shooting straight ahead of him and receiving no fire in return. He's just shooting straight ahead of him. So where the f where are they? Where are they all hiding, this guy's saying. But, like, they're not hiding. They were just out in the open. And you're firing at something. What's going on? Nothing, I'll tell you what's going on. Incompetent directing is what's going on. There is no answer. The answer is we just wanted to have them shoot their guns because that looks good. I am not going to finish this because it's bad. But, uh, fairly well animated. In fact, pretty damn well animated, I would say. Like, one of the better looking 3D CG shows I've seen. Uh, sadly, it uh, doesn't save a terrible script setting and everything else. Uh, the directing is terrible, as we've already uh, shown. Like, just basic stuff like blocking and like continuity editing so that you can actually tell where, what's going on, where characters are, what time it is, the time, time relations between various things happening in a scene. Like, that sort of stuff is just not done well. Like, that's the very basic stuff. And they're trying to do advanced stuff like slow-mo and bullet time and special crazy effects and stuff like that. Um, you, you gotta nail the basics so that those additional things actually make sense and add to a work instead of just being sort of noise on top of everything incomprehensible already going on. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the plot is nonsensical. The characters are... Mm, like, nothing. They're just bland, nothing characters. Uh, um, the message is garbled. Like, the message of the show is garbled. Um, the setting is uh, equally garbled. Uh... Yeah, not a very good show, from from the episode I watched, at least. Next up, Kageki Shoujo. We're getting close to the end of the... Fairly close, I suppose. Not that close. Depressingly not close enough. Kageki Shoujo Opera Girl. Uh, maybe I should fucking finish this video tomorrow. I feel like I have to, if I have to watch any more terrible anime, I'm gonna die. Yeah, I think I'm gonna finish this tomorrow. I don't know if I can sit through more of this. But I'm close enough to the end that I'll probably finish all of these shows. Watching these shows, but... Um... Oh, this is a season two, I didn't even notice. This, this looks interesting. I, I like this. I like the look of this. Uh, but I don't, like, care about... Well, they mean nine seasons of Yami Shibai? What the fuck is Yami Shibai? Anyway. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna watch all of this later because I don't think I can put up with any more terrible anime. We're definitely past all the good stuff by now. Um, the only time when good things are this low is like uh, kids shows or uh, like uh, gag comedies, which I assume this is a gag comedy. These are often gag comedies, like stuff that looks weird and out there. Uh, and then kid shows like this is a kid show and I think Ghetto Robo is a kid show, but I'm not going to watch this because it's the fifth season. Um, and I don't know if I'll watch Pretty All Friends Selection because that looks like a later season as well. Um, so really, only one, two, three... Three anime left. I could probably blast through that. 
But yeah, I don't feel like doing it now. I don't mind doing it tomorrow, but I don't feel like doing it now. So it's getting late anyway. I'm feeling pretty tired. I'm gonna go to sleep. Um, we'll get back tomorrow with Kageki Shoujo. Uh, yeah, what a weird fucking show. Nighthead 2041. That's a weird fucking weird. Back when I first got into anime, uh, or like early in my getting into anime, and I, I watched uh, No Game No Life and really liked it. And obviously, the, uh, No Game No Life ends on a cliffhanger, and I was like, oh, is there is there a second season? Nope, no second season. Hmm, let me go look at when the second season's gonna come out. I, it must have been confirmed, because I know this is a popular series. And I looked around, and of course, there is no second season of No Game No Life. Uh, there may never be a second season of No Game No Life, which has always struck me as very strange. But I I was reading through some like forum posts on some forum about the second season of No Game No Life, trying to see if it existed or had any information about it, and um, someone replied to the OP asking about it. Like, yeah, there's no second season, get used to it, this is anime, this is anime for you. Like, like saying like, oh, you must be new to anime. Like, yeah, this is just something you're gonna have to get used to, is that shows will just not get renewed for a second season and you end on cliffhangers. And I, and I thought to myself, oh, really? Is that, is that a common thing in anime? Huh. Uh, okay. Uh, now, having watched many anime, that's not true. That guy was wrong. That guy was lying. No Game No Life's the only show that is as popular as it is, ended on a cliffhanger, has more source material out, and had more source material out to adapt at the time. Like, it's not like they were waiting for the light novels to catch up. The light novels were already out. It was incredible. The light novels are some of the most popular light novels of all time. The anime was incredibly popular. It's the only show like it. It's the only show that that is like that that never got a second season. So that guy was just straight up lying. And, um... Yeah. I don't know why I thought I suddenly remembered that. Anyway, time to watch more dog shit anime. Uh, I believe we are watching Kageki Shoujo. Uh, or Opera Girl. Um... Let's, let's take a look at this. It's about opera, that's all I know. Founded in the Taisho era, the flower, Red Flower Opera Company attracts people's hearts across generations on a beautiful and gorgeous stage. This looks 3D CG, right? Like, I'm not tripping, it kind of looks like CG. Might be. Something, music school, Sarasa Watanabe, an innocent girl with a height of 178 centimeters. <laughs> I love it when they just give weirdly specific details. An innocent girl with a... Hey, did you meet my friend? No, I didn't meet your friend. Tell me about her. Oh, well, she's an innocent girl with a height of 178 centimeters. <laughs> Who longs for Oscar-sama. Doesn't explain what that is. Ai Narada, a former national idol who's been different to everything, both dreams and friends. That's a, that's not a sentence. That's a that's a sentence according to this post. That there's a full stop after Oscar Sama. It's not saying Oscar Sama, comma, Ai Narada, which would be implying that's who she calls Oscar Sada. No, Oscar Sama, full stop. Ai Narada, a former. Comma, a former national idol who is indifferent to everything, both dreams and friends, full stop. The music school, like, that's not a sentence, what is that? The music school life, full of hope and conflict, where everything is disjointed, is about to begin. It's an adaptation from, uh, let me guess, manga? Yeah. That is a kind of cool art style. Alright. Oh, it's in Jump X. Okay, let's, uh, Let's watch this. So, and most instantly annoying part of this show is that it was translated by most likely a Twitter user uh, because they translated uh, idol fan. I don't remember the exact Japanese that was used, but they basically translated idol fan into stan. Like in the subs, it said, I'm a huge stan. Uh, sus. 
and then they just referred to her as being cancelled online for calling a fan a creep that she got cancelled please keep your memes out of anime I why do people feel the need to do it doesn't make you look cool it does not make you look cool to do this why are so many translators obsessed with throwing their shitty meme speak into fucking translations it doesn't make you look cool it makes everyone hate you they didn't translate shinkansen to bullet train but they translated idol fan to stan what's going on here in the minds of these people there's two twins that both got into this really high class um, opera school like a pair of twins two people who are twins not two sets of twins a one set of twins and they make a note of saying we're gonna be together forever and ever chica I can guarantee you that at some point they're gonna get separated or there's gonna be the threat of them being separated and that's gonna be like a big plot point I will probably never know because I don't think I'm going to finish this show, but I will finish this episode. I just watched the first episode of Kargeki Shoujo, and it was perfectly fine. It was a perfectly fine, up to good uh, anime that nails the basics of story writing. The animation quality isn't the highest, the art isn't particularly striking, uh, however, you know, it, none of that matters if you have a decent story and characterization, and this show nails the basics, which most anime get wrong. I'm always talking about characters' wants versus needs, screenwriting 101, you know, a character should have clearly defined want and wants and needs, and that's how you resolve a character arc. So in this show, the main character is an, an ex-idol who was sort of kicked out of the group after she uh, insulted a fan, and uh, she became sort of uh, emotionally closed off and she is scared of men due to her experiences as an idol dealing with creepy idol fans um, and so she's terrified of men and uh, sort of tries to close off all of her emotions uh, and so she wants to escape men to this school by going to an all-girls school where they learn opera and she wants to sort of stay closed off in her emotions and you know not make any new connections to save herself f for fear of what might happen and stay in her little bubble closed off from the world and just d go through the motions at this school until the media has forgotten about her um but what she needs as a character is to get over her fear of men to open up as a person and be open to making new friendships and connections and uh you know become truly passionate about something that she can dedicate her life to which is probably going to be opera uh so that is pretty much how you set up a good character arc like that's how you do it it's very clearly established and those are strong motivations with stakes and they make sense for the character you know that's how you do a character arc that's just how like if i had to give us like character 101 that's you know how you do it with a reasonably strong supporting cast, uh, the her main friend is a sort of uh, ditzy, airheaded girl who is also very talented, uh, who is in every you know this sort of character that's in every anime. Um, I would describe this as sort of you know when I was watching it, I thought like I have seen this anime a million times, but now that I'm trying to think about like what other shows are like, it I can't actually draw any connect direct comparisons it's sort of like an idol show it's sort of like love live it's sort of like hibiki euphonium with the sort of competitiveness uh, or i imagine you know it's not actually happened in the first episode yet but i imagine it'll get more into that almost like a sports anime uh sort of competition and uh i i imagine there'll be some emotional drama later on uh this is a perfectly fine show uh but it is just not that interesting to me uh, I can't find it. I can't say I don't like it for any fault in the show itself. It is a well made show. It's just not well made for me. It's well made for someone else who likes these sorts of themes and is really interested in this story. Uh, it's just a matter of personal taste. I think it does everything well. Uh, well enough. 
uh, that it could be a good story for someone who likes, who that sounds interested in, who's more into shoujo than I am. Uh, I think this would be good. And another good show for my lesbians. Shouts out them lesbians. You, you might like this show. Uh, it's, it's got the shoujo vibes. Um, yeah, it's just not really my thing so much. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a well-made show, and I, I think it's underrated. Only 2,000 users on Mao. Like, surely more than 2,000 people would enjoy this show, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so go check it out if, it sounds, if that sounds interesting. Kind of a shoujo-y uh, story about overcoming trauma and uh, doing opera. You know, might, you might like it with, with like, sort of... An, it's, a, it's a bit like... I'm sure it's going to be, like, critical. It seems to be somewhat critical of, like, machoisms like ma masculinity toxic masculinity there's some like crit criticisms of macho-ness and uh toxic fan culture and stuff like that that is a thing that is that it seems to be hinting at is going to be more of a thing as it goes on maybe like some commentary on how the idol industry mistreats or how the entertainment industry treats women as sort of products Maybe it won't go that far. It is still an anime, but I feel like that's good. that was kind of hinted at. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I felt like that was hinted at in the first episode. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it's a perfectly well-made show, and I think you might enjoy it. The biggest problem I had with watching the first episode was the subtitles were terrible. But uh, I'm sure you can get over that. Uh, so yeah, uh, go, go check it out if that sounds interesting to you. Next up, we're going to be watching... Decide... Traum... What the fuck is that word? That's not a word. That's just not a word. Decide... Traumedi... 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 That's a stupid fucking word. The animation. That's stupid. I hate the title. That's a very stupid title. Um... The stage is Shibuya. When Duhei Ordo was in elementary school, he admired his kind older brother. Duhei, who witnessed the mysterious death of his brother, is now a cheerful high schooler who doesn't let the lurking nightmare surrounding phase him. But why is why is these so badly translated? One day, while kickboxing, he's bitten by a mysterious creature named Triss and has an unusual dream. He confronts his twisted desires as rumoured drops fly through the street. What does he see beyond that? Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure this is a CG show, because that looks CG, right? I was wrong with the last one. The last one wasn't CG. But this that looks CG to me. Sanzigen. I've never heard of this. That sounds Chinese. Oh, they did Black Hawk Shooter. They helped out on Pomer. Interesting. I have never heard of... Oh, I mean, I've heard of some of these, but... Interesting. Interesting. They don't seem to have made anything particularly great themselves. They've only helped out other studios. Terraformers. I, I feel like I remember this. someone talking about this as like one of the worst anime ever made or something. But, I don't know. Anyway, let's check out... Oh, Heavy Object. That's supposed to be good, right? Anyway, let's check out D-Side Traumere, the animation. I just realized I think I missed a show. I don't know how I missed this. But I, f I just accidentally forgot to watch this one or something. Maybe, maybe I didn't think it was aired yet because it said NA. But there's episodes on 9 anime, so... the I, I suppose I'll watch this afterwards. But anyway, let's watch D-Side. Okay, this show is unintentionally hilarious. Because, um... The... Like... There are people who choose to fight the evil monsters that come through generic portal into Tokyo uh, are called knocker ups, right? As in like noka apu is what they call themselves. I know if this is a, a phrase in like American English, but in in British English, to get knocked up means to have been made pregnant. Uh, so a knocker up 
sounds like someone who goes around making people pregnant. <laughs> Just, why is it they call themselves this? <laughs> it's so, what, what fucking Japanese scriptwriter was like, yeah, knocker ups is like a, a, a <laughs> what's going on? Why of all the words in the English language do they choose that? I'm definitely not going to finish this show, so I may as well just drop it, because I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to drop it, so there's no point in finishing this episode. Um, so, this show is, I'll give it a four. It's not terrible, but it's bad. Uh, it's a fairly generic, like, urban fantasy thing, where, like, the evil monsters are coming out of a portal that only we can see and we have to fight them and something like that um it is 3D CG um and uh what's weird about it is uh so there are some really really badass fight scenes like like there are some certain shots that look extremely cool um the animations during the fight scenes have, like, weight to them. Like, a lot of times, 3D animated anime, it feels like the character is floating. Like, this like this means that, like, okay, studios have finally figured out how to do good 3D animation for characters during fight scenes. They probably figured it out from... Uh, I, I reckon they're doing the same, the same technique that they were doing with, um fucking that one that one CG show that I'm forgetting the name of Land of the Lustrous where they got an act they got a 2D animator to story or to do like keyframes and then use that as the basis for their 2D animation because it, it, it looks like that it feels like that um, and which works incredibly well and some of the fight scenes look really good there's a transformation scene like a, like a magical girl anime but, but it's a guy I guess it's a transforming hero show but it's something like that. There's a trans. There's a magical girl style transformation scene with the main guy, and it looks fucking sick. It looks awesome. Uh, so they can do all this really cool animation, and yet they can't do a walk cycle. The every walk cycle in this show looks like janky dog shit. Like it, they just look completely unnatural and weird every time a character is walking, which is very distracting. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's a fairly generic plot that I don't feel like I'm going to get anything out of, um, and I don't think I can particularly recommend it, unless you're really into urban monster fighting, with kind of cool monster designs, actually, um, but a pretty generic concept that I, doesn't seem very interesting to me. Uh, okay, I suppose next we're going to watch the Idetan Deity's No Only Peace, or... Heon Sedai no Idetan Tachi. Uh, it has been 800 years since the battle gods Idetan, who boast overwhelming speed and strength, contained the demons who led the world to ruin after a fierce battle. That battle is now just an old tale and just myths. myth. <laughs> While the peaceful generation of gods who have never fought since they were born are out of peace, someone has revived the demons from a long sleep. Be bring armed forces, wisdom, politics, conspiracy, whatever you can use. No rule and no limit. Three-way battle royale is about to begin. Uh, okay. I just watched the first episode of Ida Ten Deities No Only Peace, and it was pretty great. Pretty interesting. Okay, great may be not the right word. It was interesting. It's very interesting. Um, so this is a Noitamina show. If you don't know about Noitamina, it's a a block of TV uh, on a on. I forgot the station name, like Fuji or something, I think, I don't remember, uh, that does like more experimental, weirder anime, basically, um, uh, anyway, where was I, something about this show, um, it's an interesting show with a very interesting, nice, aesthetically pleasing art style that is also somewhat unique uh, with a, an interesting premise as well, like a fairly interesting premise, I mean it's not 
I'd say it's, I mean, I guess it's kind of original, an original way to get powerful people to battle giant demons, I guess. Uh, an original way to make that plot work. Um, uh, I'm trying to can think of things to compare it to. I, I think if it, it feels Ikuhara-y, like it kind of reminds me of Gurren Lagann. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the the art style is probably my favorite thing about the show because it, it looks really cool. The background art and stuff is, is really uh, nice. And the animation is really well done as well. It's Mapper, so you can expect pretty top quality animation. Um, uh, I'm not really in the mood to watch a shonen right now, so that's why I only watched one episode. Um, there's a, there's two episodes out right now. I'm just not really in the mood to watch a shonen right now. Um, I don't know if I'm really gonna finish this because it's not really my sort of thing, shonen stuff. That is. But uh, if you like Shonen, check it out, or check out the original manga. Um, oh yeah, the original manga is written by the same guy that made Ishizoku Reviewers, I think. I think that was this show, right? Like, his only two credits are this and Ishi... Ishi, 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 Ishi. Uh, is, this, is it this one? No, wrong guy. This one. Ama, Amahara. Yeah, he did Ishizoku Reviewers and this show. Oh, I guess he's done other stuff as well, but those are the ones that... Yeah, same guy that did Ishizoku Reviewers, which is interesting because this is a very different type of show. However, it shows a little bit in the fact that there is a very unnecessary rape scene at the end of episode one. <laughs> I mean, I suppose it's not unnecessary because it's there to show how evil the bad guys are but I, I I feel like it's a little bit gratuitous and a little bit out of nowhere and tonally dissonant with the rest of the show like almost like they don't realise how much of a big deal rape is in a fairly light hearted shonen so yeah that was a bit iffy I'm not sure about that that was a bit I was like a bit um how would I put it it just felt odd it felt like taking a painting and then just sort of splashing the wrong color on at the end like like sure you could do it but it's you're making a very interesting decision <laughs> you know like it's a very like you, you're allowed to sure but that's a very weird decision to make and like if you can justify it then you know, by all means. It's just a a very bold decision, and I'm not sure they understand how bold that decision is. Because uh, one of the good things about Ishizoka Reviewers is, is that all of the edgy scenes were, like, consensual <laughs> and, like, positive basically everyone was having a good time that's what was so good that's why i enjoyed so much about the show is that everyone was having a great time the whole time like everyone involved enjoyed themselves as in the characters all were having a good time and i, I like that with etchy you know i know i don't get etchy stuff that's like where that's not the case and especially i don't know it just felt like a weird thing to put into this show that doesn't feel like it belongs there like maybe in a more serious drama or more because the, they tried to like get out get around it by making it artsy and like silhouetted and with classical music playing in the background i don't know if that really gets around it i think it just makes it more obvious that you're you know you're doing something that doesn't really fit and you're trying to make it fit but maybe you should just not have that scene in, in the first place because it doesn't make sense for the show that it's in uh Again, I don't want to be, like, a guy who's like, no, you can never depict a bad thing happening. You can you can do rape scenes if they're appropriate for the show, if they're tonally appropriate. This is not tonally appropriate. It just comes out of nowhere at the end of the first episode, like an afterthought. Um, and it's... Um, fucking weird. It was, it was like, what the fuck? Why, where did that come from? That was a bit unnecessary. I'd say that was my reaction to it. Um... Uh, but I suppose it worked to make me think the bad guys were really bad. I do think the bad guys are really bad. 
they are Nazis. Like they look like Nazis. Their design, their character design, like their uniforms and stuff. Uh, so yeah, maybe check this out. Check out uh, Hei non Seidai no Idaten Tachi. Sure, why not? I'd give it maybe a six off base of the first episode, but that's more my personal taste because it's not really my type of show. But t on a technical level, it was very well executed. All right, we've only got, I believe, like one. Is there only one more episode left to watch? I mean, one more. Yeah, because this is the second season. This we watched. Yeah, this is the only thing I have left, I think, because this is a third season. This is second season. This is ninth season. This is fifth season. And I think this is going to... I don't know what this is. I don't know what Pretty All Friends selection is, but I don't think this is the first season either. Oh, yeah, this is, like, not the first season. I don't believe. So... Uh, I think this is the last thing we're going to be watching today, which is Ore Tsushima. Uh, this, let's see. This seems funny or interesting. Um, this manga is centered around an older woman who is often mistaken as a man and called Oji-chan by her cats and Tsushima, a strange cat who appears in her garden one day. Okay, interesting. Uh, sure. This seems interesting. I'm actually, I've been, I've been excited to see what the fuck this is since I saw it. Because that is not a very typical anime poster cover thing that you see. Ever since I spotted that, I've been like, what the fuck is this show? Alright, so let's check this out. Let's watch the first three episodes of Oretsushima. And you might be surprised that I watched three whole episodes of this weird show. Well, those episodes are only one minute each. So it's really not that much. Um, fucking weird show, as I expected. I think it's like a gag comedy. I think is what it's supposed to be. It's not very funny. <laughs> I don't know if it's even supposed to be funny. The second episode doesn't have any jokes in it. It's just a story about Tsushima's old owner dying. Like some sort of Buddhist apophet about the transience of life. Tsushima's character is inconsistent. This is Tsushima, by the way. Uh, like, in the first... Like, he's, like, simultaneously a street badass cat, but also, like, super polite. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it's not supposed to. I didn't find it very funny, so I decided to stop watching it. But, um... I don't know if I can recommend it, but it, since it's so short, maybe I can recommend it. It's just fucking weird. I, there's, there's nothing else to it except the fact that it's just fucking weird. And um, that concludes my dealings with these thingies. Um, think, and by thingies, I mean animes. I'm, I'm not going to watch ONAs and OVAs. I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um... Yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that. Lots of Chinese things down here. Interesting. No one watches these, right? Like, no one no one scrolls this far down on the page. Uh, God, what a fucking weird season. Anyway. So what have we had here? I never, I didn't watch Slimy Sakai yet, but I don't know if I can be bothered to do that. Um, Kobayashi was interesting-ish. This was terrible. Kanajo mo Kanjo, I realized I have no interest in continuing to watch, but I think it's an interesting idea for a show. This was terrible. Uh, this was really good, and I enjoyed it a lot. Boku Tachi no Remake, and that's probably going to be my favorite show of the season if it continues like it was. Uh, this was also a pretty fun isekai. Um, Seire Gensoki. I have, as currently watching, I might watch a couple more episodes, in, in, see if it improves, but if it doesn't show a market improvement, 
I don't think I'll finish it. Sunny Boy is the most interesting and artsy experimental show of the season by far. I definitely recommend checking this out if you want some weird experimental shit. Uh, Shinigami Bochan to Kuromeid uh, is definitely something. Um, this is something also. These are all shows. This one was awful. This one was also pretty bad. They're all... There's, they're all shows. Um, that one's the Shota one. This is the Slice of Life thing with Lolly. That one sucked. Remain was interesting. This one wasn't very funny. Scarlet Nexus was terrible. I believe. I can't remember. Wait, which one was Scarlet Nexus? Oh yeah, Scarlet Nexus was terrible. This one was also terrible. This one was really terrible. This one was okay. And that's the, this one was extremely terrible. Those are my opinions on the season. And that's how you watch anime. <laughs> Thanks for watching.